video transport series back so damn good. Well, I'm sure you've heard it all before. So we'll forego all that technical mumbo jumbo. We can take my lamb out. Because we like to party. We don't just roll our backs around town. We travel internationally. Our think tank gear is a rite of passage and a true compadre in our long trips. When your lifeblood is creating epic imagery worldwide, your sweet cameras and equipment need to get there in one piece. We get all kinds of emotion over our think tank rollers, making us look more manly and tough on the outside. But we're not the only ones. They work for our lady friends, too. Just look at that sexy lady. Whose idea was this? Yours, Jamie! We've taken them everywhere and in every condition. And more often than not, well, these bags last longer than the equipment it protects. And we've checked a few. Just don't tell anybody. Hi, my name's Kay. I work in production like many of you all out there, whether it's in film and television. I'm always looking for a product that makes my life a lot easier. And when it comes to carrying my light stands, when it comes to carrying my tripod or my boom pole on my rock and roll cart, I love this new product, Grip and Gaff, made out of a solid material, got a very solid base to it, the convenience of strapping things in tight without having any of your poles or light stands sway back and forth. Take a look at it, the Grip and Gaff, made in the US. Go visit their website today. Sound silencers enable you to eliminate that ripping sound so you don't attract attention when opening your bag, say on the green at the PGA Tour. Filmmakers, photographers, musicians, mobile DJs, and audio techs may be artists, but we are first schleppers of equipment. Whatever cart you're using to roll your gear into a location, there's always a problem with tripods, C-stands, PA speaker stands, keyboards, and drum kit stands, because they don't stack well, sometimes fall off. Their length also causes problems by making it hard to get into elevators and around corners. Introducing the Grip and Gaff Bag version 2.0. Bigger, tougher, and better than the original, but with the same features you've come to love. Version 2.0 is over 13 inches in diameter versus 12 inches on version 1 and features a lighter, tougher bottom. You just can't beat it. Well, actually you can. Just slide it over your card handle and fill it with those items that would normally make it hard to get through doors or into elevators. The hard plastic bottom and awesomely sturdy ballistic nylon will last through years of hard work. The strap at the top secures your gear in an upright position for easy transit into and out of buildings, and storage is a breeze. If you're using rock and roller, cart master, or magliner carts, there are cutouts to let you attach your shelves. Grip and Gaff is perfect for film and video makers, mobile DJs, audio professionals, musicians, and anyone else who uses a cart to move their equipment. So tame your gear and make your life easier with the Grip and Gaff Bag. Today is a special day. Well, every day is a special day. Let's get, let's get right to it. I was just thinking, we have over 250 videos on our YouTube channel, on our main channel. 
Every one of those has been filmed with the Glide Cam. It's the one product we've used. Cameras have been changing, batteries are changing, lenses have always changed, but we've always used the Glide Cam. So I haven't done a ton of videos on Glide Cam, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with sharing you guys tips, tricks I've learned over the last 10 years using the product, showing video examples, and also kind of showing an inside look as far as why I started using Glide Cam to begin with. So the reason I started using a glide cam to begin with, and this was 10 plus years ago, roughly give or take, I wanted to be different than all the other filmmakers out there um, that were at least on my level, high school level. I, the best way to do that, in my opinion, or one of the best ways is to do wedding videos, because don't we all do wedding videos sometime in our career? At least a lot of us do. And I noticed everybody had just static shots, and I was like, those look so boring. No offense to anyone that just does static shots. And I found out um, there was a product called Glidecam. There's another product called Steadicam. So that was much further above my pay scale. So I looked at the next big thing, and that was a Glidecam. This was more for consumers, even prosumers, and especially for my budget doing wedding stuff. This was perfect. So I bought a Glidecam 2000. I started doing wedding videos and having these really cinematic moving shots. And I'll actually have some of those shots pop up right now from my early days of filming with a Glidecam. And you can see, um, it's not revolutionary. I didn't have it perfected by any means. I'm always still learning about it all. But these shots, they stood out a lot more for wedding videos, especially at the time when no one had these moving tracking shots. But with the glide cam, it made it or empowered me as a filmmaker to make my movies look like I had a budget when I was doing everything on a very, very, very small budget. Now Glycam, they've always kind of updated their Glycams or had different Glycams. They had the Glycam 2000, the Glycam 4000 for different sizes of cameras. And then Glycam came to me and they were like, hey Devin, you use the product constantly. We know that you love the product. Well, I asked if I love the product. I'm like, absolutely. And they're like, let's team up, work together. What would you suggest would be the perfect glide cam for the kind of videos that you do? What would be the best tool to tell a story the way you want it to tell? And that's kind of where the Devin Graham Signature Series Glide Cam came, which is right here. And these are the ones that we use now. With all the stuff that's out there now where people are getting some shots that didn't really exist a ton, especially on YouTube. So it made our channel and the kind of content we were creating stand out a lot more. It was super exciting for me, um, and it created a ton of opportunities. When I first started that YouTube channel the first year, I got a contact, or I got contacted by a company, and they wanted me to shoot a commercial in Iceland. And they said, the reason we want to hire you is because we've never seen smooth shots on rough terrain like you are getting. So I, at the time, I didn't have a behind the scenes channel, so they didn't know what I looked like. So they thought I was like this old filmmaker. They thought I was like a 50 year old. So they flew me to Iceland first class. They gave me like this in, um, incredible experience. But when I got on the air airplane, off the airplane, they're like, we thought you were so much older. It was just because of the work, because of the tools I had to tell the story, um, it spoke for itself and I had opportunity after opportunity from filming with a product. So if people ask like, what is the one tool that you've had that's changed your career and given you opportunities? It wasn't the camera, it all goes back to the glide cam. The biggest questions I get is, hey Devin, I don't have a budget to buy a glide cam, what would you suggest to get smooth shots if I have a zero dollar budget? Three things that I would suggest is a wheelchair. If you have a wheelchair, you sit down in the wheelchair, and this is what we did in film schools. You'd actually sit down in the wheelchair, hold the camera, then have someone push you, and then you'll get really smooth shots that way. It's not gonna be the same thing as a glide cam, but if you're running on a smaller budget, the second option that I wanna bring up to you guys is you get a two by four board, and you have one person hold it on each side and then you hook the camera, you mount the camera to the two by four and then both of you walk with the two by four and then it makes the camera significantly smoother compared to if you're running with the camera. If you have two people holding, running with the board, it's gonna make it a lot smoother. 
you'll see things like the one wheel. So here I could hold a camera, just like a roller blades, and I can get really smooth shots. Something like this though, you're spending about $1,800. So this is another option to get smooth shots as far as anything on wheels, filming out of a car, filming um, on a bike, even though that's not very easy, or roller blades is probably gonna be your best option for something a little cheaper if you're running on a cheaper budget. So there you have it. That was an overview on why I use the Glide Cam. Now, if you want more videos like this, make sure to leave in the comments down below and like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, get on that. And later this week, we'll be also showing one more video, examples of using the Glide Cam and tricks and tips. It's gonna be answering a lot of your guys' questions. We've already filmed the video, so it is coming out later this week. So stay tuned, turn on those post notifications so you can be aware of when that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching, over and out. Hi, I'm Zach Turney Cohen. I'm a systems engineer here at Open Drives, and I'm also a workflow specialist. Here at Open Drives, we've built a demo center that is the fastest post production suite in Hollywood. We wanted to provide a space in which people could come in and test with their own media or uh, with media that we create for them to see what it's like to work in the applications that they're already used to working with to really see what they can achieve. For those who aren't in Southern California, we have the ability to broadcast a live demo to anywhere in the world, uh, which we can do and show all of the various softwares working in real time. We have Adobe Premiere, we have Resolve, we have the Nuke and Nuke Studio running on top of the line HP, Z6, and Z8 workstations, all connected 100 gig directly to the workstation through an Arista 100 gig switch to our storage. One of the projects that we like to show is a fully intact edit of an episode of Mindhunter from the first season. Uh, this project has 77,000 assets. So to open that project on another storage solution might take upwards of 10 minutes, where with us it takes more along the lines of 10 seconds. The most powerful thing that we're demonstrating here really is showing multiple discrete workflows, nonlinear editing, visual effects, color correction, all working together simultaneously off of the same assets, whether they are compressed or uncompressed, off of a single OpenDrive Summit. So, all of this might sound too good to be true, in which case, I would say, please come by and check it out. Hey you guys, welcome to this NAB 2019 special. We are focusing on PTC camera control in this video. And we are really so excited this year to bring out the new design series for our uh, larger controllers at Skahoy. We have changed over to blue and black theme and we think it's so awesome. We have got so much positive feedback on this design change. And um, yeah, it's just really great. It's like coming home, finally arriving where we've been heading for, for quite some time. And we also have the Rust Pivot Cam, and this is going to be a, a world premiere for Skahoy integrating with Rust cameras. And um, I'll just give you a quick 
look into this. You can come to our booth if you want to see more details, but in this video, let me just quickly show you that we can actually adjust uh, stuff in this camera and move it, of course. So PDC control. I have uh, decided on this configuration to do something slightly different from what I usually do, which is to uh, make the uh, select section a camera selector. So I now have no camera selected and I have only one camera. So this is now selected um, by pressing button number one. I have also put preset buttons down here. So I have decided to put the label presets up for you. So when I press the button called close, you see that it's recalling a preset in the camera that goes close because this is how I stored it. And far is of course far. So this shows you one of Hello the- Hello and welcome to livenowbroadcasting.com. My name is Ben Friedman and we are here live from the show floor at NAB 2019. NAB is the worldwide broadcast standard for trade shows for broadcast and video professionals. Folks from network TV stations, broadcast TV stations come here, but also the smaller players who do corporate and industrial video, and even people who uh, shoot wedding videos and bar mitzvahs, they all come here to find the latest and greatest on what's going on in video and what's going on in broadcast technology. Uh, hopefully you're watching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash broadcasting. If you are, please sure to give us a subscribe, or maybe you're watching us on our Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash uh, live now broadcasting give us a like on there as well we are here today from one o'clock to four o'clock again live on the show floor so this is the first place you will get to see video from nab 2019 we're here from one till four today and one till four p.m tomorrow so join us today join us uh, again tomorrow uh, now we are live streaming here uh, directly through some cellular bonding technology. So uh, depending on the thousands of people here that are all trying to you know, make phone calls at the same time, we could have a couple of issues, a couple of glitches. If that happens, don't worry. We will be posting all of the videos in glorious 1080p within a day or two after uh, we get back. But we're gonna do our best to keep bringing this live to you now. And uh, we also have some fantastic giveaways from our sponsors. Uh, so if you want to subscribe and like to the page, there's links there uh, as to where you can go and sign up for those giveaways. You can uh, sign that up and get some of the fabulous gifts and prizes from some of our sponsors, absolutely free, of course. Uh, and speaking of our sponsors, just a shout out to the folks who brought this to you today. Uh, number one is Teradek. Teradek's making the live streaming equipment that we're using here. Wonderful company for live streaming uh, and uh, getting your broadcast up on the air. Uh, Open Drives, OpenDrives.com uh, is a wonderful maker of video quality network attached storage. Companies like Pixar and what have you use that when multiple people want to collaborate on the same project at the same time. Uh, Glidecam, Glidecam.com, thanks to them. Uh, they make wonderful steady cam systems and uh, you know glide cams where you can walk around and get a really great steady video from your uh, shots um, Scarhoy a European company that makes uh, uh, control surfaces for switchers and cameras uh, grip and gaff another wonderful company that makes uh, bags to go on the very very popular uh, rock and roller carts and of course think tank photo a wonderful company that makes great backpacks bags for both the photography uh, professional and the videographer. Uh, we use their bags when we go on the airports. They have the roller bags. They go up in the overhead uh, compartment perfectly, and uh, they do a great job of keeping all of your equipment safe. So the format here is we're going to try to do about six interviews per hour, about five minutes apart. Uh, so we'll do an interview, and then we're going to cut to uh, some wonderful content that's been provided by our sponsors. Uh, and then as we get to the next interview set up, uh, we'll come back from that content, and we'll break in live again from the show floor and go back to doing those interviews. So please stick with us, 1 to 4 p.m. today, 1 to 4 p.m. tomorrow, and then all the videos will be posted up uh, afterwards. Please give us a subscribe on YouTube if you enjoy this give us a like on Facebook and we'll be back with our first interview in just about five minutes right here on live now for scour controllers you have label presets for the preset buttons and um, yeah, try to beat that. I mean, that's that's really awesome. And again, remember that it's so important in 
visual media production to have your eyes on the screen, which is why you want to have tactile feedback. And we are all about that with Skyway controllers. We have um, also a section for uh, settings, so we can uh, just quickly go through the, this. We can set the exposure mode, and obviously we can adjust iris shutter speed gain and stuff like that. We can adjust the, the, the white balance of the uh, camera. We can go to auto mode, and we have access to red and, and blue gain in the camera over here. And then we go to the color, where we have saturation. We can actually remove all color from uh, the, the fruit there. Go to picture, we have sharpness. We can also enable backlight compensation if we are in exposure auto mode, which we are not at the moment. Finally, we have here, we can turn on and off the power. We can flip the image. Let's try that. Yeah, like that. And then we have finally our focus. So I can actually defocus this image with the encoder now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And we can do that with the PDC Extreme, which is one of our really cool new controllers. Come to our booth and see it. So of course, uh, finally joystick control, so exciting. I can zoom in, I can zoom out by turning the knob on the joystick. I can, uh, I think this is a homing button. Ooh, home was not really what I wanted. Now you see all the details in my studio. Oh no. Okay. And of course, there we go. Slowly. Now, pen tilt zoom, ladies and gentlemen. Come to booth C1259 in Central Hall and see it yourself. Have a great NAB show 2019. <laughs>to this NAB 2019 special. Skahoy has a booth in Central Hall. You can come watch all our gear right there. This is a demonstration of one of the things we're exhibiting, the NXT 910 with the Skahoy RCP. The NXT 910 is a frame synchronizer from Ensemble Designs. So you can see it in their suite at the Renaissance. And uh, you can also see it in, in our booth. Now it's hooked up with a Marshall camera, which is really lovely. And in fact, you can shade that directly. But the point of the frame synchronizer is that you can combine it with an RCP if you want to adjust video sources, which are otherwise not shadeable, like GoPro cameras and so forth. And the Skahoy RCP is divided into a section where in the top you have uh, parameters uh, you can access, in this case, gain and offset for for the incoming video. And uh, in the lower section, you usually have a joystick, but in this case, we put in a really lovely um, a thumb roller or yeah, roller wheel. I think we call it a roller wheel, which is essentially an encoder that will uh, allow you to adjust parameters. And the cool thing is we, you can have multiple channels and easily change between them without getting out of sync, which would be the case with a physically stuck joystick that many people people prefer but only lends itself really best to a single camera or channel. Now let's take a look at what these things can do. Uh, you can have all the details at our booth if you come down but for those of you not at NAB you might not be so lucky to be able to see that. Now um, it has a web interface the frame synchronizer so it looks like this, and if I go to the program section, then we have access to what might uh, be the most important parameter on the RCP, which is namely the iris. So there is no iris adjustment in this case because it's just a video signal that could come from a GoPro camera, goes into the frame synchronizer. But we can adjust the program, which is kind of the closest thing we, we, we have to that. And when I'm rolling the, the thumb roller, you can see the gain is going up and down in the display right there. And you also see this is reflected in the web interface. If I pull the fader or the, the slider in the web interface, this value is changing over here. You can also see it on the output picture. Yes, you can also change channels. We put that on the upper selector in this case, so you can change to channel 2, 3, and 4. And if I go back here, then I can go into menus where you can adjust gain, red, green, and blue, offset, red, green, and blue. You can adjust gain, pedestal, chroma, and also over here we have access to gain settings for audio, which can be 8 channels or 9 to channel 16 if you hold down this shift key for each single frame synchronizer inside this little great unit. I think it's the world's smallest frame synchronizer. You can actually uh, line three of them up in a single one unit size. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing. So, um, yes, that's what we have at, at display. So come to our booth and check this one out. It's, uh, of course, our RCP is generally geared to work with cameras. Uh, like the EVA 1 camera or Sony cameras or uh, even robotic cameras. Uh, Blackmagic cameras traditionally, but in this case, it's working with frame synchronizer. It could also be an AJA frame synchronizer like the FS4, FS2, FSHGR. Up to you. 
we make universal broadcast controllers and we try to support as many devices as we possibly can with different hardware form factors so that you can always pick the right control type for whatever context you're in. What if your switcher surface and your deck controller and your routing panel and your PTZ joystick? What if you only had to bring one panel? Scarhoy controllers are powerful universal broadcast panels with support for installing any device support you need. Install support for your Panasonic PTZ. Add support for a Sony camera as well. And integrate control of your ATEM video switcher too. We are serious about integration.
Welcome to this NAB 2019 special about the Panasonic Giver One camera and the Skyhoy RCP. So, if you want to see all the details, come to our booth in Central Hall and we'll show you. But in this video, I'll give you a quick overview. So, first of all, the Giver One camera is a great cinematic camera made for recording beautiful pictures. But if you want to use it on a live production, you need an RCP panel. Otherwise, you can't adjust its colors so it matches other cameras. And that's what we made happen. So, um, with us today, we have have the uh, RCP V2 from Skyhoy, the EVO 1 camera right here, and basically an RCP yeah, is that, that we developed, put it inside, and give you full NDI out. These will be shipping at the end of this month or in early May. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, so these are similar to the ones from NewTek, but they're full NDI, not NDI HX. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And what sort of price point are we looking at for that? Yeah, so we start at fifteen hundred dollars for the little guy, um, the P200, which has a Sony sensor and a full Sony image module as well, thirty times optical zoom. That's two and a half thousand. And then we've got some more weather cameras as well, which um, uh, start at about four and a half thousand. Yeah. Uh, what sort of uh, signaling protocol? I know a lot of people have the Visca protocol uh, joysticks. Will it work with Visca? Yeah, so we actually sell a, a joystick as well, um, but we've implemented our own NDI PDZ control. So you can control it over Visca, Visca over IP, or NDI. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, and I just want to, before we let you go, Eamon, I just want to get a shot of this. This is cool. This is the uh, tally area here, right? So there's yeah. built-in tally to these as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we try and put tally on all of our products. And we also have a, another system called comms. So you can plug a headset in and create a comms group. And we give uh, a, 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 an entry version of that away for free, which will give you one director and four camera operators on a comms group. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I know that a lot of people are very interested in these products. They seem to be maturing very quickly, and I think we're going to see a lot more bird dogs in productions uh, in the future. Yeah, thank you for your time. I feel like we've come a long way in a year, so I think, uh, yeah, I think we're ready for people to come and talk to us. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Eamon. Appreciate it. And we're going to be back in about five minutes with another interview right here from NAB 2019. So we'll see you then on Live Now. You install in your OB truck or in your studio, typically lined up with a number of other panels, so they will sit next to each other, one for each camera, and you can pull handles, or in this case, uh, in, in, on, on this particular version, on the screen behind me, you see we have a roller wheel, which is a new feature you can come to our booth and check out, which is really awesome if you want to use every RCP for multiple cameras, that's possible as well. And really, these RCPs are necessary to connect your, um, uh, to control the colors on the camera. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So the most important thing you can really do on an RCP will be to adjust the iris. So you'd see the handle right here on the RCP. When I pull this handle, I'm adjusting the iris and you can see it on the output picture from the camera. So that's one basic feature. Another one will be adjusting the master black. So you can see when I, I turn the ring on the joystick, I am adjusting the black level on the picture. Now, I want to take you a bit closer to it. So. Just allow me to recall a preset on my robotic camera right here. And you'll see, um, if we just go to the section we saw before, you can see in this, pic uh, in this display, you see the, um, the value of the aperture. You also see here the uh, pedestal, the master pedestal value, which is the one that I'm adjusting with the ring. Actually, this encoder knob will give you an alternative way of setting this value. Now, uh, we have a number of other buttons. Typically, you know, program, uh, sorry, uh, preview button. It flips a relay inside. Um, you'll see that button right here flips a relay it's also on top of the joystick we have auto iris if I press auto iris you'll see that it's automatically adjusting yes and I can uh, turn it off again we have uh, active panel on off now I want to go to the top uh, part of the RCP so in this section you really see all the parameters we can adjust and this is so cool because this camera has a lot of parameters you can set uh, and that you want to set if you're a professional uh, camera uh, shader then you see here we have a pedestal for red green and blue we have the master pedestal over here we have um, master knee enable we can set knee point and knee slope so if I use this encoder to uh, change this value you will see that I, t I now enable master knee and I have 
the ability to set the knee point and the slope and so forth. Um, I have a chroma parameter here. We have color coded these knobs so that they are grouped together. You can see these three knobs, they have the same color while these are colored red, green and blue and white for the uh, overall master pedestal right there. Now if you want to change these settings then you need a menu and we decided to put the menu onto this RCP on the upper button. So there you see when I press this button, I'm now going to the uh, linear matrix. So now we have linear matrix settings. If I enable this, then you see uh, the dimensions red to green, red to blue, uh, green to red, green to blue, and so forth. And of course, we can adjust these parameters with the knobs, and that's really uh, uh, cool. If I go on, I have frame rates. I can set exposure index, uh, master, uh, sorry, master gain. Um, variable shutter, shutter uh, speed, which I cannot change right now because I have turned this one off. But if I turn it on, then you see now I have ability to set the shutter speed, just to mention one thing. Or you can set it in uh, degrees instead because the camera supports these two uh, different aspects of it. Now we have ND filter as well, which is in this case um, automated in this camera. White balance settings, we have gamma settings. And finally, we have a lot of color correction parameters in this little uh, unit. Um, that, that, that's the more advanced stuff. Come to our booth and see all these things in action if, or follow us on YouTube where you'll find videos that go in depth with this great camera. We are really happy to bring it out to you at NAB 2019 and uh, to Panasonic for working with us and making this happen. <laughs>
Hi there, and welcome to this NAB 2019 special about Marshall CV 350 cameras, POV cameras, and the Skahoy RCP V2. Now, the Skahoy RCP V2 is a classic Sony form factor RCP with a section for setting all the uh, color and exposure and white balance settings of your cameras. And in the bottom, there is also a space for a joystick, or you can have an option with a, an encoder wheel, which is uh, very useful if you have multiple cameras you want to shade, like for instance, if you had three Marshall cameras on your set. But today we have only one camera and this camera is a serial camera so it's connected to this serial to Ethernet converter. This is how we roll in terms of getting access to serial devices and that's really cool because it means you can make that transition point from serial to um, IP anywhere in your infrastructure wherever it fits you the best so the RCP is connected to a PoE switch meaning that it has one cable that gives you power and signals so the RCP is talking to this box that sends serial signals forth and back to the Marshall camera and the beautiful thing is that the RCP will actually ask the camera what are your current settings so whenever you see the settings on the RCP is actually reflecting the current settings of the camera. We put great pride into integrating with cameras with the specific value ranges so we know what iris values, shutter speeds, gain settings are in these cameras and uh, bring it to you. So it's like a native experience but still you have a unified ex uh, set of, of RCPs in your obi van because these ones could be hooked up with other cameras like Blackmagic, Ari, Sony, Panasonic, etc. In this case the Marshall camera. So we are really enabling these cameras for multi-camera production. And if you want to take a look at the RCP in this top section up here, we just to give you a quick idea, we can choose the exposure mode by using this encoder between auto, manual, shutter speed, iris, and those settings will become available. Um, as we do that, you can see, I, I think we should go to manual mode. That would be the most natural when we are working with uh, an RCP. But of course you have exposure compensation in the automatic modes. You can turn that on and off turn on and off backlight compensation and so forth um, let's go back to the manual mode because shortly we are gonna uh, show the iris joystick just quickly before we can also access white balance this is basically a menu selector these buttons are menu selectors while uh, these buttons up here has settings for focus and so forth up here we now have white balance settings so I can put it from a, a white balance uh, auto mode to indoor to outdoor to one push and all the way down to manual mode where when you see it's reading the the values I can create a really horrible looking picture if I please. Now um, that's not what I please. I want to go back and show you the uh, iris um, adjustments of course because that's the big thing about an RCP. We have this joystick as I'm pulling the joystick you can see I'm adjusting iris on the camera and that's exactly what is happening right now. You see how the picture follows? I use the joystick to adjust the iris of the Marshall camera Voila, that's exactly what we are uh, looking for to have that type of control. The point of the RCP to do that. All the other things are typically pre-settings you do before the show to match the cameras color-wise and then you use the iris joystick during the operation. So there you go, Skahoy RCP V2 for Marshall CV350. Come to our booth in Central Hall and see it live. <laughs>
we have these uh, blitz systems, wireless, that go straight to the monitors um, from, that you can let the director or someone else view what you're recording. Now, I know, let me stop you for a second. Wireless video is a bit of a black art, as we have come to find out, you know, with some of the wireless stuff we've, we've been doing here at the show. But uh, there's, you know, good ones and there's, there's not so good ones. I know Teradek has a lot of ones that mm -hmm. people have used. Uh, and you can also pay, it seems, like $200, $2,000, $20,000 for wireless systems. These wireless ones, what sort of range do you get? Who are they aimed at and what sort of price point do you have? So we have basically, we have a 1500 Why are the Think Tank Video Transport Series bags so damn good? Well, I'm sure you've heard it all before. So we'll forego all that technical mumbo jumbo. Because we like to party. We don't just roll our bags around town. We travel internationally. Our Think Tank gear is a rite of passage and a true compadre. All right, sorry about that little interruption. So you were telling me about the different levels. Why don't we uh, go back to that, right, the, the, back to the, uh, to the um, wireless transmitters. Yeah, we have the wireless system. We call them the Blitz. We have a 3,000, I mean, not 3,000, 1,500, which is $3,000. 1,500 feet, yes. $3,000. $3,000. Then we have a 600 feet one, which is uh, $1,799. And then we have a 500 feet one that's released as new. Um, it's more of a little more basic, um, so it's um, $1,399. And are all these HDMI and SDI? Yes, they are both. They're all HDMI and SDI, and they also cross convert. So let's say you put in HDMI, you can SDI out, or vice versa. Fantastic. So those I know are becoming really, really popular with folks. Keep going. Take us through the rest. All right. So uh, next thing you see here is uh, we have this uh, what we call our PD movie, which we actually distribute for them in the U.S. Um, basically, this allows you to control the the focus, the iris, and the zoom all into this one system on a handle so that your, whatever you're doing, that your camera operator can do it all by himself without worrying about anything. And then last but not least is our monitors. So this is a uh, S7, SX7, which is a $1,000 monitor. It's high bright. So $1,000 monitor, high bright, SDI and SDI, uh, HDMI in and SDI. So this is really great uh, for people who want to be outdoors. And, and when you say high bright, how many nits? 2,000. 2,000 2, nits. That yeah. is, uh, you go put sunglasses on to watch yes. the monitor. You probably could, you do that. This is basically for people who don't want to bother with sun hoods outdoors. And this looks like, is that a seven inch? Seven inch one. But it looks super beefy. I mean, it's well built aluminum. You got aluminum. 20s on the side here. So that that's a camera that, uh, or a, a screen that, you know, can take road use easily. Yes, and also it's also metal because it helps to distribute the heat. Because 2000 nit does produce a lot of heat. Right, right. And, and that brings me into talking about its little brother, which we are coming. To. This is the one I'm really excited for. It is brand new at the show. First time being shown. There is not even released yet. Um, it's the X S S5, which is basically the little brother, almost identical, except that it is five inch, 2000 nit as well. But the price point is very enticing at 399. So for $399, you get a 5-inch monitor with 2,000 nits. Yes. SDI and HDMI? SDI and HDMI. Uh, you do get SDI in and out, but you only get HDMI in, no HDMI out. I see. So there's a loop through on the SDI, uh, but no, not... It doesn't. Uh, yeah, loop through on SDI, but not on the HDMI. Right. What about power options for this little power guy? Power option, it uses the uh, Sony L-series style ones, kind of like the at NPs, like uh, 970s, 750s, and 550s. Uh, it's got to be like the most popular battery. Yeah, it's just something easy that most people have. You don't have to buy them. You already have them. What, uh, when you buy a unit like this, does it come with a power adapter, a charging case? Usually when you uh, power buy something like this, it definitely comes with a DTAP cable. So you can always uh, do it to a uh, pro battery. Oh, and it also comes with a shoe mount, usually a horseshoe mount. 
And um, used, um, we are working on coming with a little piece that allows you to plug it into the wall as well, AC adapters, basically. I noticed you also have batteries here. Tell us a little bit about that. We do actually sell pro batteries as well. This is a V-mount battery, which is very uh, popular for people who run usually bigger cameras. And this one is nice that it's able to detap out. So it lasts a lot longer than those Sony DV batteries. Right, you can take a, a, a SLR like you've got here, yes. probably run it all week on one of those. Probably uh, not all week, but at least all day for sure. For the show in to show, yeah. That would be great. Well, listen, Kevin, I want to thank you very much. It looks like teleprompter screens, wireless transmission, lens controls, and batteries. I mean, uh, you know, what's the next step for ICANN? What, what, well, what part would you like to get into? I'm not sure what next part, but we left out the, one of the biggest thing we do is lighting. We're actually, lighting is probably ICANN's bread and butter, actually. But uh, right now, we're actually trying to focus mainly on our items that we are good at, and we want to get better at it. Yeah, and these look great. These look like the, uh, you know, the KinoFlow LED, but I'm sure the price point isn't what a company like KinoFlow charges. Yes, definitely not. They're not uh, the price tag of nowhere near KinoFlows. Tell us a little bit about the lights okay. while we're here. Um, let's go, let me point a little bit. Sure. So we need, so right up here we have the, so up here we have the LBX3. It is a bi-color light. Uh, right now we sell it for $15.99, so that's a very, very, uh, attractive price point. Um, and it's bicolor, meaning that you can do it with tungsten or daylight anywhere in between the 56 and 32. Is there, what sort of remote control options do you have for the lights? Uh, it's use DMX only, yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't come with any kind of wireless no, remote? No, it does not. Usually most for these lights, we kind of allow people to put them up like this on a trust and just leave it there and put control with DMX. Kevin, I think we've seen some wonderful things today. I want to thank you for joining us and uh, taking us on a tour of your booth. Right. No problem. Thank you for being having us. And uh, that's it for us right now, but we'll be back in five or ten minutes with another wonderful interview live right here from the show floor of NAB 2019. So stick with us and join us next time on Live Now. When your lifeblood is creating epic imagery worldwide, your sweet cameras and equipment need to get there in one piece. We get all kinds of emotion over our think tank rollers, making us look more manly and tough on the outside, but we're not the only ones. They work for our lady friends, too. Just look at that sexy lady. Whose idea was this? Yours, Jamie! We've taken them everywhere and in every condition, and more often than not, well, these bags last longer than the equipment it protects. And we've checked a few. Just don't tell anybody. Hi, my name's Kay. I work in production like many of you all out there, whether it's in film and television. I'm always looking for a product that makes my life a lot easier. And when it comes to carrying my light stands, when it comes to carrying my tripod or my boom pole on my rock and roll cart, I love this new product, Grip and Gaff, made out of a solid material, got a very solid base to it, the convenience of strapping things in tight without having any of your poles or light stands sway back and forth. Take a look at it, the Grip and Gaff, made in the US. Go visit their website today. Sound silencers enable you to eliminate that ripping sound so you don't attract attention when opening your bag, say on the green at the PGA Tour.
Filmmakers, photographers, musicians, mobile DJs, and audio techs may be artists, but we are first schleppers of equipment. Whatever cart you're using to roll your gear into a location, there's always a problem with tripods, C-stands, PA speaker stands, keyboards, and drum kit stands, because they don't stack well, sometimes fall off. Their length also causes problems by making it hard to get into elevators and around corners. Introducing the Grip and Gaff Bag version 2.0. Bigger, tougher, and better than the original, but with the same features you've come to love. Version 2.0 is over 13 inches in diameter versus 12 inches on version 1 and features a lighter, tougher bottom. You just can't beat it. Well, actually you can. Just slide it over your card handle and fill it with those items that would normally make it hard to get through doors or into elevators. The hard plastic bottom and awesomely sturdy ballistic nylon will last through years of hard work. The strap at the top secures your gear in an upright position for easy transit into and out of buildings, and storage is a breeze. If you're using rock and roller, cart master, or magliner carts, there are cutouts to let you attach your shelves. Grip and Gaff is perfect for film and video makers, mobile DJs, audio professionals, musicians, and anyone else who uses a cart to move their equipment. So tame your gear and make your life easier with the Grip and Gaff Bag. Today is a special day. Well, every day is a special day. Let's get, let's get right to it. I was just thinking, we have over 250 videos on our YouTube channel, on our main channel. Every one of those has been filmed with the Glide Cam. It's the one product we've used. Cameras have been changing, batteries are changing, lenses have always changed, but we've always used the Glide Cam. So I haven't done a ton of videos on Glide Cam, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with sharing you guys tips, tricks I've learned over the last 10 years using the product, showing video examples, and also kind of showing an inside look as far as why I started using Glidecam to begin with. So the reason I started using the Glidecam to begin with, and this was 10 plus years ago, roughly, give or take, I wanted to be different than all the other filmmakers out there um, that were at least on my level, high school level. I, the best way to do that, in my opinion, or one of the best ways is to do wedding videos, because don't we all do wedding videos sometime in our career? At least a lot of us do. And I noticed everybody had just static shots, and I was like, those look so boring. No offense to anyone that just does static shots. And I found out um, there was a product called Glidecam. There's another product called Steadicam. So that was much further above my pay scale. So I looked at the next big thing, and that was a Glidecam. This was more for consumers, even prosumers, and especially for my budget doing wedding stuff. This was perfect. So I bought a Glidecam 2000. And I started doing wedding videos and having these really cinematic moving shots. And I'll actually have some of those shots pop up right now from my early days of filming with a Glidecam. And you can see, um, it's not revolutionary. I didn't have it perfected by any means. I'm always still learning about it all. But these shots, they stood out a lot more for wedding videos, especially at the time when no one had these moving tracking shots. But with the glide cam, it made it or empowered me as a filmmaker to make my movies look like I had a budget when I was doing everything on a very, very, very small. And we are back live now here on the show floor at NAB 2019. And if you've been in the video business for any amount of time at all, you probably have heard of B&H, B&H Photo Video. They are without a doubt the most famous uh, retailer and wholesaler of video production camera equipment, uh, both uh, over the internet and uh, of course uh, from their store in uh, New York, in Chelsea in New York. I'm here with Alan Lugo from uh, B&H, who's worked there for what, 11 years? Yeah, 11 years. Tell me a bit about what it's like to work for such a retail establishment. Well, I've been around the block as far as uh, jobs are concerned. I used to work in the broadcast realm. I used to do some work at TBS and CNN as well. I came to New York City and I got a job at B&H uh, kind of just promoting the gear that I was just so used to using. And I've been there 11 years for a great reason. B&H is one of the best employers I, I've ever experienced. And considering I am around all of the most beautiful tech in the world, it's really hard for me to kind of imagine why my paychecks just go back to the company because I'm just buying so much all the time. It's a wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful place to shop as well. 
I know that most people in my level in corporate video production, you know, folks that don't work for a large network or what have you, uh, there's really two places we often look whenever it comes to any uh, video equipment. One of them is, of course, Amazon.com, yes. and the other is B&H. And quite often, uh, you guys generally have very similar prices, but whenever we've had problems, uh, you know, returning stuff or anything, B&H has always been wonderful. Uh, they have knowledgeable staff, which is one thing you can't say for Amazon. How, how do you fight with a behemoth like Amazon like that? What's the strategy? The number one thing is to put the customer number one. So as as far as an as a organization like B&H, we value customer satisfaction 100%. So that being said, if you're looking for broadcast equipment or just technology in general that's a bit more complicated than you're used to, if you call B&H, the person on the other line is going to be an actual shooter or a person that's involved in that field in some way. So you're getting the best advice and they're not commission based, so they have no reason to steer you down a different path. They just get you what you need to get. Fantastic, and of course that one big difference between Amazon and B&H is if you're up in uh, New England or New York or that area, you can actually just drive right down. First time I was in the uh, B&H store, I was amazed at not only the products you sell, but they're all out and you can touch them and get your hands on them. Is that part of the strategy you do? That is a great strategy to have. I mean, when you come to New York, a lot of people, they drop their bags off at the hotel and they go straight to B&H for that great hands-on experience. Quite frankly, it's a bit of a pilgrimage. Yes, you know, it's it is, like yeah. every time we go to New York, it's like, <laughs> let's uh, do a pilgrimage yeah. to uh, B&H yeah. and see what's new there and get our hands on some of that new equipment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. We have uh, tour buses come through all the time, especially in the summertime. It is super popular. So definitely, I would recommend getting there in the morning just to make sure you have some browsing time without the crowds getting too crazy. But that's okay. We will help you any capacity we can. Now, those of you who haven't been to B&H may not have heard of the incredible conveyor belt system that you guys have there, which is kind of different from any other retail store that, uh, that I've ever seen. How did that come about? So there is a really great man. His name is Gary. He works at B&H. He designed that conveyor belt uh, system from scratch. He's a great engineer, but one of the reasons why we have that conveyor belt system, as you're shopping, you don't actually physically have to carry anything with you. Essentially, we tally up everything and you just you pick up everything at the end so you could browse freely without having to schlep anything heavy. So you guys often, you have uh, video equipment, you have photography equipment. What else uh, do people find at B&H? Sure, uh, we have microscopes, we have telescopes, we have audio gathering equipment, we have basic digital cameras, we have paper, we have printing, we have gaming now. We have essentially anything in the tech field, we got it. Fantastic, and here at NAB, you guys are a fairly large presence. You yeah. bring a lot down. What's the thinking behind that? Well, the idea is to kind of bring the store to you at this point. So we have a little bit of everything that you can get at the store, minus telescopes. Of course, it's all show specific. So in this case, we have audio and camera and things like that. But if you go to a photo show, all the best photo equipment in the world is there in one place. That's fantastic. So people can uh, go on the website. If they need uh, questions answered, they can call. They're actually going to speak to an actual Absolutely. shooter, someone who's knowledgeable about that. They buy stuff, <laughs> and then if they have problems with it, you guys are very easy to deal with on the back end. Absolutely great return policy. Usually when it comes down to most things, unless it's a special order item, we give you about 30 days, and every once in a while for longer B&H holidays, we extend that for a couple of months. Uh, I know we've bought a lot of stuff uh, through you, and we, we buy it from uh, various different kinds of sources, but B&H is always one place where we go for reviews and testimonials on products and to, to see what's going there. Alan Lugo, thank you so much thank for you, joining sir. us today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And that's all the time we have here, but we'll be back with another interview in just a few minutes. So please join us then, right here on Live Now. Now Glycam, they've always kind of updated their Glycams or had different Glycams. They had a Glycam 2000, Glycam 4000 for different sizes of cameras. And then Glycam came to me and they were like, hey Devin, you use the product constantly. We know that you love the product. Well, I asked if I love the product. I'm like, absolutely. And they're like, let's team up, work together. What would you suggest would be the perfect Glycam for the kind of videos that you do? What would be the best tool to tell a story the way you want it to tell? 
And that's kind of where the Devin Graham Signature Series bike cam came, which is right here. And these are the ones that we use now. With all the stuff that's out there now where people are getting smooth shots that didn't really exist a ton, especially on YouTube. So it made our channel and the kind of content we were creating stand out a lot more. It was super exciting for me, um, and it created a ton of opportunities. When I first started that YouTube channel the first year, I got a contact, or I got contacted by a company, and they wanted me to shoot a commercial in Iceland. And they said, the reason we want to hire you is because we've never seen smooth shots on rough terrain like you are getting. So I, at the time, I didn't have a behind the scenes channel, so they didn't know what I looked like. So they thought I was like this old filmmaker. They thought I was like a 50 year old. So they flew me to Iceland first class. They gave me like this and, um, incredible experience. But when I got on the airplane, off the airplane, they're like, we thought you were so much older. It was just because of the work, because of the tools I had to tell the story, um, it spoke for itself and I had opportunity after opportunity from filming with a product. So if people ask like, what is the one tool that you've had that's changed your career and given you opportunities? It wasn't the camera, it all goes back to the Glide Cam. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey Devin, I don't have a budget to buy a glide cam, what would you suggest to get smooth shots if I have a zero dollar budget? Three things that I would suggest is a wheelchair. If you have a wheelchair, you sit down in the wheelchair, and this is what we did in film schools. You'd actually sit down in the wheelchair, hold the camera, and then have someone push you, and then you get really smooth shots that way. It's not gonna be the same thing as a glide cam, but if you're running on a smaller budget, the second option that I wanna bring up to you guys is you get a two by four board, and you have one person hold it on each side and then you hook the camera, you mount the camera to the 2x4 and then both of you walk with the 2x4 and then it makes the camera significantly smoother compared to if you're running with the camera. If you have two people holding, running with the board, it's going to make it a lot smoother. You'll see things like the one wheel. So here I could hold a camera just like a rollerblades and I can get really smooth shots. Something like this though, you're spending about $1,800. So this is another option to get smooth shots as far as anything on wheels, filming out of a car, filming um, on a bike, even though that's not very easy, or rollerblades is probably gonna be your best option for something a little cheaper if you're running on a cheaper budget. So there you have it. That was an overview on why I use the Glide Cam. Now, if you want more videos like this, make sure to leave in the comments down below and like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, get on that. And later this week, we'll be also showing one more video, examples of using the Glide Cam and tricks and tips. It's gonna be answering a lot of your guys' questions. We've already filmed the video, so it is coming out later this week. So stay tuned, turn on those post notifications so you can be aware of when that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching, over and out. Hi, I'm Zach Charney Cohen. I'm a systems engineer here at Open Drives, and I'm also a workflow specialist. Here at Open Drives, we've built a demo center that is the fastest post production suite in Hollywood. We wanted to provide a space in which people could come in and test with their own media or uh, with media that we create for them to see what it's like to work in the applications that they're already used to working with to really see what they can achieve. For those who aren't in Southern California, we have the ability to broadcast a live demo to anywhere in the world, uh, which we can do and show all of the various softwares working in real time. We have Adobe Premiere, we have Resolve, we have the Nuke and Nuke Studio running on top of the line HP, Z6, and Z8 workstations, all connected 100 gig directly to the workstation through an Arista 100 gig switch to our storage. One of the projects that we like to show is a fully intact edit of an episode of Mindhunter from the first season. Uh, this project has 77,000 assets. So to open that project on another storage solution might take upwards of 10 minutes, where with us it takes more along the lines of 10 seconds. 
The most powerful thing that we're demonstrating here really is showing multiple discrete workflows, nonlinear editing, visual effects, color correction, all working together simultaneously off of the same assets, whether they are compressed or uncompressed, off of a single OpenDrive Summit. So all of this might sound too good to be true, in which case I would say, please come by and check it out. guys, welcome to this NAB 2019 special. We are focusing on PTC camera control in this video and we are really so excited this year to bring out the new design series for our uh, larger controllers at Skahoy. We have changed over to blue and black theme and we think it's so awesome. We have got so much positive feedback on this design change and um, yeah, it's just really great. It's like coming home, finally arriving where we've been heading for, for quite some time. And um, we also have the Rust Pivot Cam, and this is going to be a uh, world premiere for Skahoy integrating with Rust cameras. And um, I'll just give you a quick look into this. You can come to our booth if you want to see more details, but in this video, let me just quickly show you that we can actually adjust uh, stuff in this camera and move it, of course. So PDC control. I have uh, decided on this configuration to do something slightly different from what I usually do, which is to uh, make the uh, select section a camera selector. So I now have no camera selected and I have only one camera so this is now selected um, by pressing button number one. I have also put preset buttons down here. So I have decided to put the label presets up for you so when I press the button called close you see that it's recalling a preset in the camera that goes close because this is how I stored it and far is of course far. So this shows you one of the really takeaways for scour controllers. You have label presets for the preset buttons and um, yeah try to beat that. I mean that's that's really awesome and again remember that it's so important in visual media production to have your eyes on the screen which is why you want to have tactile feedback and we are all about that with Skahoy controllers. We have um, also a section for uh, settings so we can uh, just quickly go through the, this. We can set the exposure mode and obviously we can adjust iris shutter speed gain and stuff like that. We can adjust the, the, the white balance of the uh, camera. We can go to auto mode and we have access to red and, and blue gain in the camera over here. And then we go to the color where we have saturation. We can actually remove all color from uh, the, the fruit there. Go to picture. We have sharpness. We can also enable backlight compensation if we are in exposure auto mode, which we are not at the moment. Finally, we have here, we can turn on and off the power. We can flip the image. Let's try that. Yeah, like that. And then we have finally our focus. So I can actually defocus this image with the encoder now. Ah, that's pretty cool. And we can do that with the PDC Extreme, which is one of our really cool new controllers. Come to our booth and see it. So of course, uh, finally joystick control. So exciting. I can zoom in. I can zoom out by turning the knob on the joystick. I can, uh, I think this is a homing button. Ooh, home was not really what I wanted. Now you see all the details in my studio. Oh no. Okay. And of course, there we go. Slowly. Now, pen tilt zoom, ladies and gentlemen, come to booth C1259 in Central Hall and see it yourself. Have a great NAB show 2019. <laughs>
Welcome to this NAB 2019 special. Skahoy has a booth in Central Hall. You can come watch all our gear right there. This is a demonstration of one of the things we're exhibiting, the NXT 910 with the Skahoy RCP. The NXT 910 is a frame synchronizer from Ensemble Designs. You can see it in their suite at the Renaissance. And uh, you can also see it in, in our booth. Now it's hooked up with a Marshall camera, which is really lovely. And in fact, you can shade that directly. But the point of the frame synchronizer is that you can combine it with an RCP if you want to adjust video sources, which are otherwise not shadeable, like GoPro cameras and so forth. And the Skahoy RCP is divided into a section where in the top you have uh, parameters uh, you can access, in this case, gain and offset for for the incoming video. And uh, in the lower section, you usually have a joystick, but in this case, we put in a really lovely um, a thumb roller or yeah, roller wheel. I think we call it a roller wheel, which is essentially an encoder that will uh, allow you to adjust parameters. And the cool thing is, we you can have multiple channels and easily change between them without getting out of sync, which would be the case with a physically stuck joystick that many. People people prefer but only lends itself really best to a single camera or channel. Now let's take a look at what these things can do. Uh, you can have all the details at our booth if you come down but for those of you not at NAB you might not be so lucky to be able to see that. Now um, it has a web interface the frame synchronizer so it looks like this and if I go to the program section then we have access to what might uh, be the most important parameter on the RCP which is namely the Iris. So there is no iris adjustment in this case because it's just a video signal that could come from a GoPro camera goes into the frame synchronizer. But we can adjust the program, which is kind of the closest thing we, we, we have to that. And when I'm rolling the, the thumb roller, you can see the gain is going up and down in the display right there. And you also see this is reflected in the web interface. If I pull the fader or the, the slider in the web interface, this value is changing over here. You can also see it on the output picture. Yes, you can also change channels. We put that on the upper selector in this case so you can change to channel 2, 3 and 4 and if I go back here then I can go into menus where you can adjust gain, red, green and blue, offset, red, green and blue, you can adjust gain, pedestal, chroma and also over here we have access to gain settings for audio which can be 8 channels or 9 to channel 16 if you hold down this shift key for each single frame synchronizer inside this little great unit. I think it's the world's smallest frame synchronizer. You can actually uh, line three of them up in a single one unit size. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing. So, um, yes, that's what we have at, at display. So come to our booth and check this one out. It's, uh, of course, our RCP is generally geared to work with cameras. Uh, like the EVA 1 camera or Sony cameras or uh, even robotic cameras. Uh, Blackmagic cameras traditionally, but in this case, it's working with frame synchronizer. It could also be an AJA frame synchronizer like the FS4, FS2, FS HDR. Up to you. We make universal broadcast controllers and we try to support as many devices as we possibly can with different hardware form factors so that you can always pick the right control type for whatever context you're in. <laughs>
get the most possible CRI at several different color temperatures. Michael, it seems like you maybe have given that pitch once or twice before. <laughs> yeah, once or twice. We do this quite a bit. So, um, but that that same thought pattern actually goes from this fixture, the slip slittle, um, through these Fresnels as well, and we also have some par fixtures that have those same characteristics. So this is an ellipsoidal, so this is something similar to, uh, uh, you know, more standard in the industry has been previously something like a Source 4. Exactly. Uh, so essentially this would be an LED version of that fixture. Um, the nice thing about this, as opposed to a normal incandescent fixture, those are 3200 degrees, so you can get, to, you can get 3200 all day long, uh, whereas this giving you that, you know, that broad range of different color temperatures gives you a big advantage in different, uh, different locations. Now, of course, with regular incandescent lighting systems, uh, you do have to put a gel in front of it if you want to change the color. You have to uh, worry about power requirements. You have to worry about heating requirements, noise from fans, that sort of thing. I mean, those things generate a lot of heat, have a lot of power. But on the flip side, a lot of people think LEDs, do LEDs really have the same sort of punch that you can get from an ellipsoidal source 4 with a, a true 500 watt you know, halogen bulb back there? What do you say to that? Um, here's the trick with LEDs because everything is additive color mixing. So as I'm bringing stuff into the fixture to create, let's say, a different color like a red, for example, um, it's additive. So that means I'm actually increasing the amount of output. Uh, when you put a gel in, it's called subtractive. So you're actually blocking every every bit of spectrum except for that particular red. So in color, LED is always brighter. Uh, where you do come into play is like if you are trying to do a straight up white, um, you do get some, you will get some output changes. But like you said, if you're putting a gel in front of the fixture, as soon as you put that gel in, you're blocking light. So for example, if you're trying to color temp up from 32 up to 5600, you have to drop that gel in, you're blocking a lot of light. Whereas this, you're adding in, you're, you're adding in source, so you're actually going to Im improve your output to the point where a lot of people have to dim down to get to the levels that they're used to. I know that uh, most uh, of the standard source fours are like 575 watts. Uh, what, is it, what are these comparable to brightness and how much power do they use? Uh, this is comparable to a 750 watt uh, discharge lamp or uh, halogen lamp. Um, power consumption on this is actually pretty low. Uh, you're looking at about, I don't know, between four and 500 watts per fixture. Uh, the other advantage is we can actually daisy chain power on these, so you're not looking at having to run dimmer cable up to a fixture and then run that all the way back down. You can actually power link from here to your next fixture and go straight down the line. Um, so that saves you a lot of time in cabling and setup. So I noticed you've got it hooked up via DMX to a little controller here. Are there any other control options uh, if you don't want to use DMX? Um, you can actually control the fixture right from the back of the fixture if you want to. Um, there are a bunch of presets that are already in there, so you can control dimmer, you can control preset color temperatures, or you can control the individual colors if you want to create your own thing. All right, so if this is not going to be far away, and it's going to be on the floor somewhere where you can have someone control it directly, you don't have to go through the whole uh, DMX thing. Right, so if you're just going to have it on a stand, for example, and you don't want to run data to it, you don't have to. You can control everything from the back of the fixture. And finally, uh, are there any other power options other than 110, or is that just the standard power? Uh, actually, this fixture will run everything from 110, 208, 230, uh, you name it, it'll run it. Right, but there's no like vMix uh, battery mount option? Um, actually, on this fixture over here, if we can move the camera over here. Really we can quick. move the camera. Why not? Um, this fixture here actually offers the ability to run 28 volt power. So if you are going to run, let's say like an Anton Bauer pack, uh, like you would for, oh, sorry, that's right. Uh, so like for a regular camera battery pack, yeah, you can actually plug that into this fixture right here. So you can actually go ahead and run this off of a battery, and you get the same amount of output that you would if you're running regular power. And, and this is not an ellipsoidal. This is just this is focusable. This is a Fresnel. Uh, you, so you have, you, and then from the back, like we were talking about, the, the, the ellipsoidals don't have the dial controls, but the Fresnels do. So I can control dimmer, zoom, and preset color temperatures right from dials. So and of course you can mix it in a DMX system like the other ones. Absolutely. Last question, of course, a, uh, a debate that's happened, you know, as far as I can remember. Is it pronounced Chauvet or Chauvet? It's pronounced Chauvet. It's pronounced Chauvet. Chauvet. Do you, do, do you, what, what do people come in saying? Uh, it's everything from uh, Chevette, 
uh, show like, like the Chevrolet yeah, car yeah. that I had when I was 16. Exactly, exactly. We hear all kinds of um, abominations of the name. So, uh, and I know even for myself when I first started the company, I got corrected quite a bit. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's all good. Michael Graham, thank you so much for joining uh, us today. I appreciate it. Yeah, and that's all the time we have in this little segment. But we'll be back with another interview in just a few minutes. So please stay here and keep with us here on Live Now. What if your switcher surface and your deck controller and your routing panel and your PTZ joystick? What if you only had to bring one panel? Scarhoy controllers are powerful universal broadcast panels with support for installing any device support you need. Install support for your Panasonic PTZ and support for a Sony camera as well. And integrate control of your A10 video switcher too. We are serious about integration. Welcome back to LiveNowBroadcasting.com. We are still here at NAB 2019 Broadcasting Live right from the show floor. So first place you'll get to see any of these cool new products. And speaking of cool new products, I'm here with Will Africano from Narbox. Now, is it Narbox or Gnarbox? It's, Nar it's Narbox, yeah. It's, it's Nar Before we get into the product, where does that name come from? 
Well, we actually started as a community of on online and Instagram a long time ago, five years ago. Uh, and we were all action sports, adventure photographers and videographers, um, uh, filmmakers. And, and we actually identified a problem in our workflow, which is that we always had to bring laptops with us in order to manage backups um, and to view our files. Just as we were traveling, maybe the trip took us to the Himalayas, the shoot took us um, these different places that we would all love to go. But we did get to go. I'm going to stop here. Just on, on behalf of videogra videographers everywhere, guys like you who like shoot action sports up in the Himalayas, while guys like me are standing up in corporate America in a convention center with really crappy carpet, I got to tell you, I mean, I, we look at those videos and they're they're awesome, but you guys are out in super remote areas. Exactly. That's got to cause some issues. Yeah, it causes issues, especially in, in harsh environments, hard weather, and when you have to carry everything on your back, this is something we can all relate to, if you have to carry all of your gear on your back, it weighs you down over time, right? And if that gear includes a couple pounds just for a laptop and some drives, why not consolidate that? So that's why we made this, this NAR box, which is just a, a gnarly, rugged device. So it actually is a box, and you're yeah. holding this box. This is it. This it's is it. about the size of your phone. It's about the size of my phone, yep pretty much straight up with that one and it's uh, you know a little bit thicker but uh, it weighs less than a pound uh, it does fit in my pocket which is really nice and it's fully waterproof ruggedized dust proof drop proof and um, can sustain some pretty harsh environments and when you actually what it does is it has USB-C has SD ports and you can plug those SD cards in or any card reader and it'll offload those cards um, instantly here on the box so, I hit so it's it got a hard drive inside there yeah it's solid state up to a terabyte um, so we can get 512 or, or a terabyte, and you can expand any storage you want with uh, the, the other USB-Cs. They can be used for your two terabytes, four terabytes, what other drives you want to bring with you for additional storage capacities. So instead of, you know, I got my card, I got to get out my laptop, find the little card reader, because of yeah. course none of them have card readers anymore. Thank you, Apple. And uh, so you plug the card reader in, plug a, your SD card in. You know, if it's a, a, a portable machine, you might not have that much room on your drive, so you got to plug your portable drive in and then hope that it copies over while that's all out and it's all battery powered. Yep. This does it automatically. Yep, and it has a removable battery system, so you can bring as many batteries as you want. It charges off of any USB uh, portable battery bank you could have with you, and it'll just power straight off that. So, does it copy all the files, or what? What does it recognize specific? media files? Well, you have two options. Um, by default, what it will do is, um, oh, back up a second. It copies Back up all. a second, Craig. Yeah. Craig, back up a sec. No, no, go ahead. It, it, it backs up all file types, if that was the, the initial question. It doesn't matter what you plug in. You can back up anything. Like, PDFs, like, yeah, anything. I was about to say, let's assume that you've got Excel spreadsheets yeah, on there. Can, For our corporate file. viewers who are watching, you know, they want to back up their Excel files in the field. Right. It will back that up too. Yep, you could back up your Excel files too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, but you were saying it has two modes. Yeah, so the modes are you can actually plug it in and it'll back up everything that's on your card, even if you already backed it up once. It'll back it up, build redundant copies if you want, especially if you want to send it to multiple locations. You can also set it up where I could plug it in, back up some files. I could plug it back into my camera, continue shooting, and then back it up again, and it'll only take the new files that I shot. Um, so those are the two different modes. So it's a smarter copy or, or just a, a straight dump every time. What I like about that is that uh, I'm one of those guys that believes that a file doesn't exist until it exists in at least two places. Yes. So I could take something out of my camera, offload it to the drive, but then I don't have to format my card. I can put the card back in the camera knowing that when I put it back in, it's not going to make multiple copies if I don't want it to. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's, that I think is super important for everyone. In fact, I might want to have two NAR boxes, so then I've got three copies of it. How automatic is it? Is it you just you know put the card in, go get a sandwich? Oh, so you plug it in, and you hit one button, and then it's going to run that backup. So right now, you can see it's actually making progress. It's going to instantly run a checksum, MD5 checksum verification at the end to make sure all the bytes are there and give you a little extra security. Fantastic. Then what happens when you get back home and you want to offload stuff? Can you edit right on the drive, or, or what do you do? So you could edit off of this. It's you know it's got a USB C port that's operating uh, USB 3.1 Gen 1, and um, you plug this as USB C into your computer. Then all the files and folders that you backed up are going to be there. Um, the beauty of this device, though, is that it, you can wirelessly connect in from a phone or a tablet and actually view those files in the field, allowing you to actually organize and move files around into different folders. 
computers so I can uh, actually get my organization done before I plug it into my computer. Um, I can also pre-program my backups to have auto-organization by date or file extension, remove folder structures, and do all sorts of different uh, customizations so that you can just be hitting a button all day and when you plug it in your computer, everything's exactly how you'd want it organized at the end of the day. Any kind of uh, cloud backup service or anything like that? So you can uh, wire, you can connect this into a local Wi-Fi. It has a dual band Wi-Fi on it, and um, it'll back up right now to Dropbox and um, soon to be Frame.io as another location that you could back up to. So you're out on the slopes or in the surf or under the water all day shooting stuff, going back in, backing stuff up. When you're done, you get up, you head to Starbucks, it connects to the Starbucks Wi-Fi and takes your existing backup, which is already a backup of your card, and backs that up to a cloud service as well. Exactly, yeah. And you I, could do selects as well if you're trying to just work with an offline editor, for example, and get some part of your of your of your day's footage uh, up or the whole dailies. You could do that as well. You could also just send proxies. So if you didn't want to send, you know, a terabyte of footage into the cloud because that'd take a long time on a Starbucks Wi-Fi, um, you can transcode proxies and generate smaller files, smaller bitrate files that you can sync up later uh, in post. Well, Will Africano, I think I speak for a lot of videographers out there who say we hate you for that lifestyle with your cool beards and your, you know, caps that I am sure you occasionally wear backwards. And uh, but it does seem like a really cool product. Where can people find out more about it? Uh, Narbox.com is the best place to find out more. You can live chat with any of our customer support reps and ask all the questions you want. Narbox.com, and that's all the time we have for in this segment here. But we'll be back with another interview in just a few minutes. So please stay with us here on Live Now. Welcome to this NAB 2019 special about the Panasonic Evo 1 camera and the Skahoy RCP. So, if you want to see all the details, come to our booth in Central Hall and we'll show you. But in this video, I'll give you a quick overview. So, first of all, the Evo 1 camera is a great cinematic camera made for recording beautiful pictures. But if you want to use it on a live production, you need an RCP panel. Otherwise, you can't adjust its colors so it matches other cameras. And that's what we made happen. So, um, with us today, we have the uh, RCP V2 from Skahoy, the EVO 1 camera right here. And basically an RCP is that panel that you install in your OB truck or in your studio, typically lined up with a number of other panels. So they will sit next to each other, one for each camera, and you can pull handles, or in this case, uh, in, in, on, on this particular version on the screen behind me, you see we have a roller wheel, which is a new feature you can come to our booth and check out, which is really awesome if you want to use every RCP for multiple cameras. That's possible as well. And and really, these RCPs are necessary to connect your, um, uh, to control the colors on the camera. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So the most important thing you can really do on an RCP will be to adjust the iris. So you'll see the handle right here on the RCP. When I pull this handle, I'm adjusting the iris and you can see it on the output picture from the camera. So that's one basic feature. Another one will be adjusting the master black. So you can see when I, I turn the ring on the joystick, I'm adjusting the black level on the picture. Now. I want to take you a bit closer to it, so just allow me to recall a preset on my robotic camera right here. And you'll see, um, if we just go to the section we saw before, you can see in this, pic uh, in this display, you see the, um, the value of the aperture. You also see here the uh, pedestal, the master pedestal value, which is the one that I'm adjusting with the ring. Actually, this encoder knob will give you an alternative way of setting this value. Now, uh, we have a number of other buttons. Typically, you know, program, uh, sorry, uh, preview button. It flips a relay inside. Um, you'll see that button 
right here flips the relay. It's also on top of the joystick. We have auto iris. If I press auto iris, you'll see that it's automatically adjusting. Yes. And I can uh, turn it off again. We have uh, active panel on off. Now, I want to go to the top a part of the RCP. So in this section, you really see all the parameters we can adjust. And this is so cool because this camera has a lot of parameters you can set uh, and that you want to set if you are a professional uh, camera uh, shader. Then you see here we have a pedestal for red, green and blue. We have the master pedestal over here. We have um, master knee enable. We can set knee point and knee slope. So if I use this encoder to uh, change this value, you will see that I, t I now enable master knee and I have the ability to set the knee point and the slope and so forth. Um, I have a chroma parameter here. We have color coded these knobs so that they are grouped together. You can see these three knobs, they have the same color while these are colored red, green and blue and white for the uh, overall master pedestal right there. Now, if you want to change these settings, then you need a menu. And we decided to put the menu onto this RCP on the upper button. So there you see when I press this button, I'm now going to the uh, linear matrix. So now we have linear matrix settings. If I enable this, then you see uh, the dimensions red to green, red to blue, uh, green to red, green to blue, and so forth. And of course, we can adjust these parameters with the knobs, and that's really uh, uh, cool. If I go on, I have frame rate. I can set exposure index, uh, master, uh, sorry, master gain. Um, variable shutter, shutter uh, speed, which I cannot change right now because I have turned this one off. And welcome back here to NAB 2019 with Live Now Broadcasting. We are continuing to shoot live despite a few uh, hiccups here on the show floor so you get the first look at the latest gear. And I'm here with Kevin Hart from Rhino Systems. Kevin, thank you for joining us today. It's Kyle. I'm here I know with. I know we're live, but we can't I thought we were. I thought we were at the Oscars. No, <laughs> <laughs> you were just playing a joke on me, right? So, Kyle, yeah. um, you guys at Rhino, if I'm not mistaken, started off kind of as one of these Kickstarter companies. Tell us a bit about what, what that was like. You bet. Yeah. So we started on Kickstarter in 2011, actually. Um, I wasn't a filmmaker in the beginning. I was an insurance salesman, and ended up taking filmmaking up as a hobby, and started fiddling around and made some fun stuff and. We got on Kickstarter uh, with our first, it was, it was actually a terrible product. It was called Rhino Steady. It was a handheld stabilizer, but that led us to sliders, and that's really that, what we're known was for. Was that the uh, pitch on Kickstarter? This is our this first is, product. Terrible. It's a terrible, Don't terrible product. Buy it. Don't buy it. No, I'm actually shocked. I'm, I was All humbled. of a sudden, it got funded with $20 million. Not quite. 80 grand, though, which was the world to me. Wow. You know, we sold 300 of them, and that's really what gave us the seed money to develop the Rhino slider, and then motorization, and then, which we'll talk about in a minute, the new system, Arc 2. Fantastic. I tell you, one of the things I ended up, it wasn't during the Kickstarter program, but I ended up buying one of your sliders with the ARC, and the thing that sold it for me is the thing is virtually silent. Yes. And like, like almost no other motorized slider on the market, you can use it in a quiet interview setting and you don't get that constant hum. Yep, yep. That was, that was a big priority for us as filmmakers is you have to have that scratch audio if, if you need it. And so... Um, also, it's, it's annoying to your talent if the thing's noisy. So the new system is even quieter than the old system. Well, so that's yeah, the second time you mentioned new system. I Tell know. us what's I'm, new I'm, in the I'm new eager. system. I'm eager. So we have a whole new system called Rhino Arc 2. Previously, we had a system called Rhino Motion and Rhino Arc. And so Rhino Motion gave you that linear movement. Rhino Arc gave you that panning motion. And just to recap, the, the motion was like a motor that sat on the side, exactly. and then the Arc was a whole separate unit with a whole separate, you know, Correct. couple of control cables that sat on the top. Correct. And you had a little handheld controller that you could control the motion in real time. And Which was also the battery. Yes. But not the battery of the Arc. It was only the battery of the motion Correct. unit. So it was, I mean, it is a bit to set up. It is. There's, there's cables that get pinched in the rollers. You, as a user, you might have experienced that. Once or twice. Once or twice. I know. It's a pain. So we've actually, we have much better cable management on the new system. So we've merged all of those into one unit called Arc 2 and added tilt and focus. And so focus is optional. Arc 2 is a two-axis pan-tilt system, and it has a lot of awesome features. You can actually power your camera directly from it. It has a 15-pound load capacity. You can do day to night time lapse using a new app out called Light Lapse. Uh, it's, I mean, it's day and night above what, what we've currently done. And it's, uh, the, the tilt is standard with it? Tilt is standard, yep, up to 15 pound load capacity. 
Fantastic. So this, uh, we're seeing it over here. And also, I noticed that unlike the original model, this has controls on the unit. Is that a different strategy? A little bit. There's, there's other competitors on the market that uh, they go with an app-only approach, which it works if your phone works and it works if you connect to the product. Uh, as professionals, I like to have physical controls on a product because I don't have to rely on my phone in case my battery dies. And so we built in, we call it dual joystick controls. You have one joystick that controls your pan, your tilt, and then you have another joystick on the front that controls your uh, slide and your focus. So you can set up a move extremely fast using just those joysticks, or you can use the app uh, depending on what experience you want. Now, assuming you're not doing anything with lens control or time lapse, uh, what's the cabling solution? How many how many cables do you really have to have hooked up? Uh, so right now you have one cable that runs to the motor on the side of the unit from Arc 2. Uh, eventually we're going to make that wireless with another motor upgrade. Uh, that's yet to be announced, but that's the goal. Is we hate cables as a company. Um, uh, Focus has a, a little Cat5 cable that plugs into Arc 2, but that's not really an issue. Right. Now, if you want, if you already have the uh, rails, like the previous uh, yeah. rails, will this new system still work with all the old sliders? Yes, it is all backwards compatible. So, um, we have two new motors out that are actually compatible with our new slider and the old Rhino slider Evo. So, we have a high torque and we have a high, uh, high speed motor. So, you can actually go vertical with up to 10 pound load capacity. Wow. Yeah. So, do, uh, so do you have, if you want the ARC 2, do you still have to get the new motion motor? You do not. No, Arc 2 will plug into your existing motor. The only benefit of the new motors is that they're low profile. So we have this larger head that goes across the slider. Um, you'll have to set what we call an edge buffer so it doesn't run into it. If you upgrade and get a new motor, it'll actually, you can see it here, it's lower profile. Right. Okay, and uh, then what about cost of this compared to the Arc? What, the, the Arc was a very reasonable product, especially if you bought it at the same time and you bought it in one of the, uh, you know, you guys have bundles and kits. And I remember buying that all as a bundle. It was, it was very reasonably priced. Yep, so the, the old product was priced at about $600 for linear motion, $400 for, for pan. And so the new system, you're in at $1,400 for the pan tilt, and that controls the motor for linear and it controls focus. So you're in probably about 1,700 with focus, well, really full four axes compared to two axes. And that, so, so it comes with the focus, it's not an optional? Focus is optional, extra $300. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, does it have any kind of, uh, is the battery built into it now? Yes, yes. So it has a 60 watt hour battery, which is pretty large. Um, it'll power the full system, four motors, and, a, and actually powering your camera for about four hours. If you're just doing pan tilt, it'll last for about six to eight hours, and time lapse uh, lasts a lot longer. And you're saying now with this system, you can actually lift 10 pounds on a vertical slide? Yes, correct. Wow. And correct. Uh, that's, that's obviously a lot of power. That's with the high torque motor? That's, that's with the high torque motor. It's roughly five times more torquey than the, the high speed motor. Torquey, I like that. Um, I, I got to tell you, looking at this now, the other thing that strikes me, and it, we are in a bit of a noisy environment here, granted, but it is still very, very quiet. So it looks like even with all the extra power and extra things that this does, it, it still has that signature Rhino quiet motor system. It does. We've worked even harder on the electronics this, this time around, where it's actually quieter even with the high torque motors, uh, the pan, the tilt. You know, we're powering four motors out of this thing. And so it's... Now, what's, looking forward down the road, I'm wondering what maybe is the next thing. Like, for instance, one thing on the previous gen, I don't know if this has it or not, is the ability to do repeatable moves, to save a couple of different moves, you know, save like three or four moves, be able to recall them. I know that's one benefit of some of the products that do have the app, is yeah. now you've got a phone to work with, so you can save some of that stuff. Sure. Do you have any, uh, is any of that in this product, or maybe plans for that sort of thing? Uh, we'll see if it makes it for our cutoff, because we're, we're starting to ship in June and we're still finalizing the firmware, uh, you will be able to save moves. So you can set up to five keyframes in a move and you can edit those keyframes based on what you want, whether focus or tilt or pan. Uh, and you'll also be able to save them from the phone as well. It might not be available on launch though. Now, are you gonna go back to Kickstarter for this one? This one was actually funded on Kickstarter in, what was it, November, December of last year. So we raised about $350,000 for it. And that's funded our production, and we're about ready to ship. Wow, that's wonderful. Is there anything else uh, you can tell us that's coming soon? Uh, the only other thing, I would talk about the LightLapse app. Um, it's a day-to-night app that we have out. It's free to try. 
uh, $25 to buy, but it automates day to night time lapses just using your iPhone. Uh, you can download them, share them. Um, those, that app and a bunch of other post-processing for time lapses is going to be included free with all of our hardware moving forward. Fantastic. Kyle Hart, thank you so much for your time, your great products. Very Pleasure good. having thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that's all the time we have for this segment, but we'll be back with another interview in just a few minutes. So please stick with us right here on Live Now. Done, then you see now I have ability to set the shutter speed just to mention one thing or you can set it in uh, degrees instead because the camera supports these two uh, different aspects of it now we have ND filter as well which is in this case um, automated in this camera white balance settings we have gamma settings and finally we have a lot of color correction parameters in this little uh, unit um, that, that that's the more advanced stuff Come to our booth and see all these things in action if, or follow us on YouTube where you'll find videos that go in depth with this great camera. We are really happy to bring it out to you at NAB 2019 and uh, to Panasonic for working with us and making this happen. A lot of times I'll get asked the question, what differentiates open drives? Why is it that we can assemble some commodity hardware and achieve performance that maybe other competitors cannot achieve? And that really comes in the software stack. You can throw lots of hardware at a storage problem and it will be very, very expensive and really not net you the performance it is that you're looking for. What OpenDrive shines at is really understanding the workflows, the um, IO in which uh, media entertainment and these large file formats interact in and be able to generate a software stack and a software platform that allows for this efficiency of the use of the hardware. So really all the secret sauce so to speak and, and the magic really happens within our software. So we're leveraging an operating system in which we built um, to really be focused on I.O. Uh, we're utilizing a file system and tuning that file system in order to get ultra low latency performance. And then we're also wrapping that in a user interface that's extremely easy to use and user friendly. Some panels are limited to one brand. Your Sony RCP will only control your Sony camera. Your Panasonic controller is limited to your Panasonic camera. But with Scarhoy Universal Broadcast Panels, everything is different. The same controller can connect with your video switcher, your PTZ camera, your tally system, and the list goes on. You can integrate and control almost any brand of hardware in the broadcast industry. And when new models come out, you can expect your Scarhoy panel to support those too. It'll be a future safe investment. Scarhoy, the new standard of universal control. Hi, this is Jason. And Diana with Austin's Best DJs. And whether you're new to the DJ business or a veteran, one thing is for sure, loading and unloading equipment is hard work, especially for mobile DJs who bring so much equipment. For the last few years, we used this traditional dolly that converted to a flat four-wheel dolly, but we still had to make two or three trips to bring all of the DJ equipment and two or three more trips for our photo booth equipment. Solution, a better dolly and a grip and gaff bag to go with it. We recently acquired the R16 Rock and Roller Multicart and grip and gaff bag. And wow, these were truly a godsend. We were actually able to fit our entire DJ setup for a medium-sized venue on the dolly, making just one trip. We also fit our entire photo booth setup on it, also in one trip. So we actually cut down our trips from five to two, which was amazing. The grip and gaff bag was made to fit perfectly on the dolly. Make sure you order the right bag for the cart you have. It's a super strong, heavy-duty bag that slips right on the cart handle, allowing you to load speaker stands, light stands, folding stools, and all those other things that used to fall off the cart. We love our new cart, and we love the Grip and Gap bag, and I think you will too. Hi, 
Hi there, and welcome to this NAB 2019 special about Marshall CV 350 cameras, POV cameras, and the Skahoy RCP V2. Now, the Skahoy RCP V2 is a classic Sony form factor RCP with a section for setting all the uh, color and exposure and white balance settings of your cameras. And in the bottom, there's also a space for a joystick, or you can have an option with a, an encoder wheel, which is uh, very useful if you have multiple cameras you want to shade, like for instance, if you had three Marshall cameras on your set. But today we have only one camera and this camera is a serial camera so it's connected to this serial to Ethernet converter. This is how we roll in terms of getting access to serial devices and that's really cool because it means you can make that transition point from serial to um, IP anywhere in your infrastructure wherever it fits you the best so the RCP is connected to a PoE switch meaning that it has one cable that gives you power and signals so the RCP is talking to this box that sends serial signals forth and back to the Marshall camera and the beautiful thing is that the RCP will actually ask the camera what are your current settings so whenever you see the settings on the RCP is actually reflecting the current settings of the camera. We put great pride into integrating with cameras with the specific value ranges so we know what iris values, shutter speeds, gain settings are in these cameras and uh, bring it to you. So it's like a native experience but still you have a unified ex uh, set of, of RCPs in your OBVAN because these ones could be hooked up with other cameras like Blackmagic, Ari, Sony, Panasonic, etc. In this case the Marshall camera. So we are really enabling these cameras for multi-camera production and if you want to take a look at the RCP in this top section up here we just to give you a quick idea we can choose the exposure mode by using this encoder between auto manual shutter speed iris and those settings will become available um, as we do that you can see I, I think we should go to manual mode that would be the most natural when we are working with uh, an RCP but of course you have exposure compensation in the automatic modes you can turn that on and off, turn on and off, backlight compensation and so forth. Um, let's go back to the manual mode because shortly we are gonna uh, show the iris joystick. Just quickly before we can also access white balance. This is basically a menu selector. These buttons are menu selectors while uh, these buttons up here has settings for focus and so forth. Up here we now have white balance settings so I can put it from a a white balance uh, auto mode to indoor to outdoor to one push and all the way down to manual mode where when you see it's reading the the values I can create a really horrible looking picture if I please. Now um, that's not what I please. I want to go back and show you the uh, iris um, adjustments of course because that's the big thing about an RCP. We have this joystick as I'm pulling the joystick you can see I'm adjusting iris on the camera and that's exactly what is happening right now. You see how the picture follows? I use the joystick to adjust the iris of the Marshall camera Voila, that's exactly what we are uh, looking for to have that type of control. The point of the RCP to do that. All the other things are typically pre-settings you do before the show to match the cameras color-wise and then you use the iris joystick during the operation. So there you go, Skahoy RCP V2 for Marshall CV350. Come to our booth in Central Hall and see it live. <laughs>are the think tank video transport series back so damn good well i'm sure you've heard it all before so we'll forego all that technical mumbo jumbo because we like to party we don't just roll our backs around town we travel internationally our think tank gear is a rite of passage and a true compadre in our long trips when your lifeblood is creating epic imagery worldwide your sweet cameras and equipment need to get there in one piece we get all kinds of emotional over our think tank rollers, making us look more manly and tough on the outside, but we're not the only ones. They work for our lady friends, too. Just look at that sexy lady. Whose idea was this? Yours, Jamie! We've taken them everywhere and in every condition, and more often than not, well, these bags last longer than the equipment it protects. And we've checked a few, just don't tell anybody.
Hi, my name's Kay. I work in production like many of you all out there, whether it's in film and television. I'm always looking for a product that makes my life a lot easier. And when it comes to carrying my light stands, when it comes to carrying my tripod or my boom pole on my rock and roll cart, I love this new product, Grip and Gaff, made out of a solid material, got a very solid base to it, the convenience of strapping things in tight without having any of your poles or light stands sway back and forth. Take a look at it, the Grip and Gaff, made in the US. Go visit their website today. Sound silencers enable you to eliminate that ripping sound so you don't attract attention when opening your bag, say on the green at the PGA Tour. Filmmakers, photographers, musicians, mobile DJs, and audio techs may be artists, but we are first schleppers of equipment. Whatever cart you're using to roll your gear into a location, there's always a problem with tripods, C-stands, PA speaker stands, keyboards, and drum kit stands, because they don't stack well, sometimes fall off. Their length also causes problems by making it hard to get into elevators and around corners. Introducing the Grip and Gaff Bag version 2.0. Bigger, tougher, and better than the original, but with the same features you've come to love. Version 2.0 is over 13 inches in diameter versus 12 inches on version 1 and features a lighter, tougher bottom. You just can't beat it. Well, actually you can. Just slide it over your card handle and fill it with those items that would normally make it hard to get through doors or into elevators. The hard plastic bottom and awesomely sturdy ballistic nylon will last through years of hard work. The strap at the top secures your gear in an upright position for easy transit into and out of buildings, and storage is a breeze. If you're using rock and roller, cart master, or magliner carts, there are cutouts to let you attach your shelves. Grip and Gaff is perfect for film and video makers, mobile DJs, audio professionals, musicians, and anyone else who uses a cart to move their equipment. So tame your gear and make your life easier with the Grip and Gaff Bag. Today is a special day. Well, every day is a special day. Let's get, let's get right to it. I was just thinking, we have over 250 videos on our YouTube channel, on our main channel. Every one of those has been filmed with the Glidecam. It's the one product we've used. Cameras have been changing, batteries are changing, lenses have always changed, but we've always used the Glidecam. So I haven't done a ton of videos on Glidecam, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with sharing you guys tips, tricks I've learned over the last 10 years using the product, showing video examples, and also kind of showing an inside look as far as why I started using Glidecam to begin with. So the reason I started using the Glidecam to begin with, and this was 10 plus years ago, roughly, give or take, I wanted to be different than all the other filmmakers out there um, that were at least on my level, high school level. The best way to do that, in my opinion, or one of the best ways is to do wedding videos, because don't we all do wedding videos sometime in our career? At least a lot of us do. And I noticed everybody had just static shots, and I was like, those look so boring. No offense to anyone that just does static shots. And I found out um, there was a product called Glidecam. There's another product called Steadicam. So that was much further above my pay scale. So I looked at the next big thing, and that was a Glidecam. This was more for consumers, even prosumers, and especially for my budget doing wedding stuff. 
this was perfect. So I bought a Glycam 2000. And we're back here on the show floor at NAB 2019, live now broadcasting. Thank you for joining us. We are here at the Falcon Eyes booth with Mike. Ng Mike, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about Falcon Eyes. Where are you guys based? How long have you been around? Tell us a bit about the company. Okay, great. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are the Hong Kong company, and then, uh, we are already in the lighting market for 20 years. 20 years? Yes. So I must admit, I've seen some of the lights you've, you uh, have put out there, but I haven't seen them for that long. Is it mostly the Chinese market, and then you come over here, or? Yeah, actually, uh, we, uh, we, are, we, are, we are based in China, uh, Hong Kong, China. Right. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, in the past, we are in the uh, photo uh, market, and then now we, I think, uh, start from five years uh, ago, we start uh, on the video and broadcasting market. And now I know you're very big on Amazon.com. Is that where you sell most of your products? Uh, yes, uh, this is, we, we have many, many dealers right. uh, to sell every, everything uh, on, online on an overseas market. Now, when I see a lot of the reviews of your products, it looks like high quality products at a very, very attractive price point. So yeah. what, what is your target market? Uh, actually, we are targeting for uh, some uh, small production house and also some uh, amateur or uh, semi port uh, market. So really, you know, somebody might be looking at Kino Flow lighting or something like that. Right. Very, very expensive, uh, whereas you have similar products, but at, you know, priced for a different group of uh, users. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the Kino Flow is a very, very good branding and then uh, producing the very good high quality uh, product. And uh, this is what uh, we want to learn from the Kinderfold and also some uh, pretty good uh, quality items. So tell me a little bit about this new product that you're showing here at the show. What do we have here? Yeah, this is uh, one of our key items. Uh, this is... Uh, I don't know what that's doing to you uh, on the live stream there. This may be a seizure-inducing video, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. Go on. Yeah, but uh, uh, actually this is uh, the flexible panel. That's, um, maybe I can show Oh, so, so look at that. You can actually take it off the frame and yes. curve it around things, or what do people do with that? Yeah, actually, uh, there's a uh, so, uh, so uh, There's many uh, applications. Some, uh, something like uh, you can roll it up uh, all together to uh, has a very special effect. And also, you can, it can be as an outdoor application. You can put uh, for the outdoor location, uh, because is it like waterproof? Uh, this is rainproof. Rain, rainproof. Rain, rainproof. Uh, not not. Uh, you can't uh, put it in your swimming pool. No, you cannot drown it <laughs> in the water. Yeah, but uh, uh, at the rain day, uh, yes, it yeah. uh, can rock it right. If it's right a rainy right. day, if it's a foggy day, something like that, yeah. this is going to be able to put it out. It also looks like um, you could just like tape it to a wall or something if you've got a very small amount of yeah, space. So have, uh, actually, uh, in, in the kit set, it already comes with some Waco sticker, and then you can stick it on the wall. Right, perfect, because obviously all the pa you know, the power is separate from the light. Yes, exactly. So tell me a bit about that. First of all, it looks like, are these bicolor LEDs? You can, you can go... Uh, actually, uh, this is uh, the new, new version of uh, the flexible light. Uh, this is the RGB version, and then uh, we have uh, some special effect, some, something like uh, the... Po uh, Police! Oh, look at uh, that! Uh, yeah, the cab car. And then uh, you can also, as a lightning, and then you can also change the speed. So these special effects are actually built right into it? Yes. So I can have this in my car, battery powered, and you know, if somebody is hassling me on the road, I just put it up to the window, <laughs> turn on the police. Yeah, yeah. when you take in the video, you can sim simulate some special effect as a perfect screen. What sort of power options are there for this? Uh, we have uh, uh, we have range from uh, 100 uh, 100 watts, uh, 150, and then 200. And are there uh, battery and AC options too? Yeah, this is AC, and then you can use uh, with the DMX signal, and then uh, you can also use uh, with the battery. Uh, the, the battery is uh, just at the back. Oh, it's got a V-mount battery on yeah, this. It's just a standard V-mount. You just slide it right yes. on. Now I also notice uh, and notice that you've got antennas on the top here. So is that for if you're not using DMX? Uh, we uh, actually we have the apps. Uh, the apps, uh, but uh, this is not uh, available uh, on the app store right now. But uh, uh, with the apps, you can control a couple of light as a group set, 
and then uh, you, uh, this is the antenna, the antenna, and then to use uh, with the apps to control uh, instead of the DMX signal. Great. So this is the light is available right now? Uh, yes, this is av av available. And what sort of price point are we talking here? Uh, this one, uh, for example, this one, I think uh, is roughly around uh, eight, uh, eight, 900. Eight or 900? Yeah. Yes. And that's for the RGB version, yeah. but you also have uh, bicolor, uh, bicolor and... Bicolor, yes. And that's probably a little less expensive? Yes, I think it's ranged from uh, 500 uh, to, to, uh, to, to a grand. Right, so incredibly reasonably priced for what you get with multiple power options, multiple control, and that flexibility is really yeah. good. Mike, thank yeah. you so much for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And that's all the time we have in this interview, but we'll be back with many, many more interviews to come today right here from NAB 2019. So please stay with us here on Live Now. and having these really cinematic moving shots. And I'll actually have some of those shots pop up right now from my early days of filming with a glide cam. And you can see, um, it's not revolutionary. I didn't have it perfected by any means. I'm always still learning about it all. But these shots, they stood out a lot more for wedding videos, especially at the time when no one had these moving tracking shots. But with the glide cam, it made it or empowered me as a filmmaker to make my movies look like I had a budget when I was doing everything on a very, very, very small budget. Now Glycam, they've always kind of updated their Glycams or had different Glycams. They had a Glycam 2000, Glycam 4000 for different sizes of cameras. And then Glycam came to me and they were like, hey Devin, you use the product constantly. We know that you love the product. Well, I asked if I love the product. I'm like, absolutely. And they're like, let's team up, work together. What would you suggest would be the perfect Glycam for the kind of videos that you do? What would be the best tool to tell a story the way you want it to tell? And that's kind of where the Devin Graham Signature Series Glide Cam came, which is right here. And these are the ones that we use now. With all the stuff that's out there now where people are getting smooth shots that didn't really exist a ton, especially on YouTube. So it made our channel and the kind of content we were creating stand out a lot more. It was super exciting for me, um, and it created a ton of opportunities. When I first started that YouTube channel the first year, I got a contact, or I got contacted by a company, and they wanted me to shoot a commercial in Iceland. And they said, the reason we want to hire you is because we've never seen smooth shots on rough terrain like you are getting. So I, at the time, I didn't have a behind the scenes channel, so they didn't know what I looked like. So they thought I was like this old filmmaker. They thought I was like a 50 year old. So they flew me to Iceland first class. They gave me like this and, um, incredible experience. But when I got on the airplane, off the airplane, they're like, we thought you were so much older. It was just because of the work, because of the tools I had to tell the story, um, it spoke for itself and I had opportunity after opportunity from filming with a product. So if people ask like, what is the one tool that you've had that's changed your career and given you opportunities? It wasn't the camera, it all goes back to the glide cam. The biggest questions I get is, hey Devin, I don't have a budget to buy a glide cam. What would you suggest to get smooth shots if I have a zero dollar budget? Three things that I would suggest is a wheelchair. If you have a wheelchair, you sit down in the wheelchair. And this is what we did in film schools. You'd actually sit down in the wheelchair, hold the camera, and then have someone push you, and then you'll get really smooth shots that way. It's not gonna be the same thing as a glide cam, but if you're running on a smaller budget, the second option. Is and we're back here at NAB 2019, live direct from the show floor, the first place you will see all the latest and greatest uh, techniques, toys, trips, and services. And we're here with Janelle Jordan yeah. from Production Hub. Now, Production Hub, as far as I know, is a service where if you uh, are looking for crew or if you are crew and you're looking for job, you know, it's just a better way of getting jobs than looking on 
Craigslist or that sort of thing. But that's you know that's my minuscule view of what I think Production Hub is. Am I close? Do I have that right? Or why don't you tell me your own words? Yeah, you are correct. Yeah, we are an online marketing and advertising platform. So anybody from a makeup artist to video production company, um, you know, advertisers like Canon or Panasonic, um, etc., market and advertise on our site. Um, so you can be found there, and then you can also find crew as well um, using our services. So whether you place a free request with us or you work through myself as a production manager, um, you know we recommend vendors and you know have a crewing service as well. So when I've used Production Hub before, I've done I think the freeway. I hate to say that, sorry, uh, but you know we've put a, a, a job posting up there. Hey, we need three camera operators for this and this job. Here's the budget and what have you. And that's mostly because in the sort of level of work we're doing, it's usually just a few people for a day or two. It's not that specialized. Well, if someone's got a more complicated project where they're crewing a film or crewing a large commercial or something like that, how do production managers like yourself help out the producer? Sure, so my job is glorified middleman, essentially. So I um, <laughs> take the guesswork um, and really kind of, you know, specialize, you know, filter down the, the most, you know, recommended and um, qualified crew. So you don't have to search for hours on the site or multiple sites. We're really a one-stop shop um, to find anybody that you need. Um, we've, we've crewed whole feature films, large uh, productions as well. So from, you know, G&E trucks to, you know, anybody you need really, you can, you can find them on Production Hub. How big does a production need to be where you would say, okay, you should have a production manager, one of us working on there? So it doesn't, it can be a one man band, you know, ask, but if you're from, you know, Seattle and you've got to shoot in Dallas and you don't know who to use, you know, even if it is a single camera operator, you know, or uh, a two man crew, camera op and audio op, you know, we can help you find that person. Uh, it's it's a little daunting sometimes to even place a free request sometimes. It's a great service if you kind of like to filter down. Um, but if you really just are looking for recommendations, you can use us for something as small as that as well. What about uh, uh, things like reviews and testimonials? Do, do folks have that? I mean, is that on your site? So that if I want to hire a camera guy, I can sort of see what their rating is, you know, like an Uber driver. You know, sure. I can say, oh, that guy's 4.7, I'll hire him. Oh, right. 3.8, I'm staying away from that guy, you know. Do you have that sort of thing? Um, so on the back end of our system, we do. So we make internal notes so we know, hey, that guy was really great, um, this person not so much, um, you know, that kind of a thing. But on our profiles themselves, we do have a, um, a feature where you can ask someone that you've worked with to make recommendations on your site so they can, you know, write a little blurb on you saying how great it was to work with you. And we do have a vendor rating system for our, our buyers, the folks who place free requests with us, where they can make notes and they can, um, you know, give their feedback as well. Fantastic. So if you are uh, someone who is, is I'm, you know, I've always looked at it from the buyer's end, you know, I've been looking to hire folks. But if you're looking at it from a crew perspective, what advice would you give to someone who is a camera operator or, or that sort of thing looking for work? What, what, do they need, what sort of ducks do they need to have in a row you know, before coming to Production Hub and putting those items on there? Sure, so I mean, I definitely recommend a profile, our basic profiles, even for those you know, just starting out, whether you're a, um, you know, a college student just looking to break in. We have basic profiles for $5.99 a month. I mean, it's literally less than a McDonald's meal. <laughs> so, you know, I haven't seen me when I go to McDonald's, but uh, that's beside the point. So, uh, you know, it starts there and it kind of builds from there. Um, you know, all of our pretty much our, our lowest featured profile is $699. It's it's almost less, you know, or equal to one job. And that's for a year. That's a year of advertising. Okay. So, um, you so know. So a feature profile is, you're featuring, a, a, this is for a crew person. Correct. And they want to be featured, so it's advertising for them. And it, what does their $700 a year get them? Um, so it gets you, and it, it scales depending on how many different categories you want to be in. That, that accounts for six total. You get free, um, crew leads directly to your email that you can respond to for people such as yourself that place our free requests. Um, 
if as a featured you know profile member, those those are the folks who I look to as a production manager first um, for those crewing jobs. Um, usually they're a little bit more serious, a little bit more seasoned, so that's who I recommend. Yeah, and I, I you know I don't want to speak bad of anyone, but it's true. If you're going to spend, you know, if you are your own business, you're a camera operator or a mic operator or a makeup order, you know, you've got to advertise, you've got to market your, yourself just like any business would market. And if you've got someone who's got a free account versus someone who is investing, and you notice I said investing, $700 there for that year of advertising, you're pretty sure that guy isn't just like a fly-by-night person. Correct. I mean, and that's not to say we don't have some great basic profiles as well. Um, but, you know, you just know they're a little bit more serious, like I said, a little bit more seasoned um, when, they, when they do make that investment. So let me put you on the spot here. What would you say is like the strangest job that you, how long have you worked there, first of all? Um, I have worked at Production Hub for two years, but I've been a production manager for 16, so. Well, so first of all, let me ask you, how do you find that different? Is it different at Production Hub than the traditional way you used to do it? Um, no, not terribly, honestly. It's, um, it's the same, you know, it's, it's just more online. You know, I, I go out into the field less. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing because I get to sleep, but um, no, it's pretty much it's pretty much one for one. So, what is uh, getting back to my other question? What is the strangest production that you so far in your tenure have uh, had to manage? Um, at Production Hub or in general? Yes. <laughs> so I worked for um, almost ten years on a television production called Forensic Files oh. as a producer production manager. So as you can imagine, if you've ever seen that show, it's about true crime. There's a lot of strange things that I had to find there, whether it was a very specific car or a fake body part or something like that. So that was always interesting, <laughs> to say the least. And what about requests you get in from Production Hub? What's the oddest thing you've seen? It's really, you know, it's very straightforward. I can't, you know, there's nothing that has been that off the wall. And, and if it is really out there, then maybe we don't put it live. You know, we've had some alternative filming resources, um, adult, you know, style things that may maybe get asked for and that's not quite our, not knocking it. But that's a whole different point. podcast, that's quite frankly, Janelle. Situation. That's not us, uh, you know, uh, yep, I can yep, come yep, back yep. with the other crew and talk about that later, but we can't talk about that on this one. Exactly, yes, yeah, so, same. <laughs> Janelle, I want to thank you for uh, giving us that little bit of a spotlight into what you do there at Production Hub, and thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. And that's all the time we have left in this segment, but we'll be back with many more interviews later on, so please stay with us right here on Live Now. you guys is you get a two by four board and you have one person hold it on each side and then you hook the camera you mount the camera to the two by four and then both of you walk with uh, two by four and then it makes the camera significantly smoother compared to if you're running with the camera if you have two people holding running with the board it's gonna make it a lot smoother you'll see things like the one wheel so here I could hold a camera just like a rollerblades and I can get really smooth shots. Something like this though, you're spending about $1,800. So this is another option to get smooth shots as far as anything on wheels, filming out of a car, filming um, on a bike, even though that's not very easy, or rollerblades is probably gonna be your best option for something a little cheaper if you're running on a cheaper budget. So there you have it. That was an overview on why I use the Glide Cam. Now, if you want more videos like this, make sure to leave in the comments down below and like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, get on that. And later this week, we'll be also showing one more video, examples of using the Glide Cam and tricks and tips. It's gonna be answering a lot of your guys' questions. We've already filmed the video, so it is coming out later this week. So stay tuned, turn on those post notifications so you can be aware of when that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching, over and out. Hi, I'm Zach Turney-Cohen. I'm a systems engineer here at OpenDrives, and I'm also a workflow specialist. 
Here at OpenDrive, we've built a demo center that is the fastest post-production suite in Hollywood. We wanted to provide a space in which people could come in and test with their own media or uh, with media that we create for them to see what it's like to work in the applications that they're already used to working with to really see what they can achieve. For those who aren't in Southern California, we have the ability to broadcast a live demo to anywhere in the world, uh, which we can do and show all of the various softwares working in real time. We have Adobe Premiere, we have Resolve, we have the Nuke and Nuke Studio running on top of the line HP, Z6, and Z8 workstations, all connected 100 gig directly to the workstation through an Arista 100 gig switch to our storage. One of the projects that we like to show is a fully intact edit of an episode of Mindhunter from the first season. Uh, this project has 77,000 assets. So to open that project on another storage solution might take upwards of 10 minutes, where with us it takes more along the lines of 10 seconds. The most powerful thing that we're demonstrating here really is showing multiple discrete workflows, nonlinear editing, visual effects, color correction, all working together simultaneously off of the same assets, whether they are compressed or uncompressed, off of a single OpenDrive Summit. So, all of this might sound too good to be true, in which case, I would say, please come by and check it out. guys, welcome to this NAB 2019 special. We are focusing on P2C camera control in this video. And we are really so excited this year to bring out the new design series for our uh, larger controllers at Skahoy. We have changed over to blue and black theme and we think it's so awesome. We have got so much positive feedback on this design change. And um, yeah, it's just really great. Just like coming home, finally arriving where we've been heading for, for quite some time. Um, we also have the Rust Pivot Cam, and this is going to be a uh, world premiere for Skahoy integrating with Rust cameras. And um, I'll just give you a quick look into this. You can come to our booth if you want to see more details, but in this video, let me just quickly show you that we can actually adjust uh, stuff in this camera and move it, of course. So, PDC control. I have uh, decided on this configuration to do something slightly different from what I usually do, which is to uh, make the uh, select section a camera selector. So I now have no camera selected and I have only one camera so this is now selected um, by pressing button number one. I have also put preset buttons down here. So I have decided to put the label presets up for you so when I press the button called close you see that it's recalling a preset in the camera that goes close because this is how I stored it and far is of course far. So this shows you one of the really takeaways for scour controllers. You have label presets for the preset buttons and um, yeah try to beat that. I mean that's that's really awesome and again remember that it's so important in visual media production to have your eyes on the screen which is why you want to have tactile feedback and we are all about that with Skahoy controllers. We have um, also a section for uh, settings so we can uh, just quickly go through the, this. We can set the exposure mode and obviously we can adjust iris shutter speed gain and stuff like that. We can adjust the, the, the white balance of the uh, camera. We can go to auto mode and we have access to red and, and blue gain in the camera over here. And then we go to the color where we have saturation. We can actually remove all color. And we're back here at NAB 2019 live now broadcasting. Uh, everyone who's ever tried green screen knows 
shows that there's a bit of a art and a bit of science to it. It can be difficult to get the results you expect. Well, the company we're talking with now, Reflect Media, Reflect Media. Correct. Yes, they have a whole different approach, and uh, Calvin Holcroft, take us through your new system. Yeah, so, so basically, it's a, it's a system that's been around for maybe 15 years, 18 years, and it was pioneered by the BBC in the UK. And the grey fabric behind us has basically got millions of glass beads scattered all across the surface, making it super reflective. So when you use the curtain in conjunction with this LED light ring, which is the two chroma key colours being green and blue, it bounces the light back and gives you a really nice, evenly lit green screen that we can key out with no difficulties, really. You know, it's amazing. We're seeing here the, the green uh, screen that the gentleman's sitting at, and you can see it's keyed out up there. What's amazing, though, is you don't have, on. first of all, the screen's not green, it's this gray, say, and there's no lighting on that you have to put up, you know, behind the person. The, the only light that's needed for that gray fabric is this LED light ring. That's making the green or the blue screen. The only lights that you need in the studio will be purely for the, the talent. Okay, so we don't need to light the background up with absolutely any lights whatsoever. So uh, this ring you have here, this goes on your camera? Correct, yeah. Turn it on there, let us uh, have a look at it. So a green screen here. Now I'm going to ask you, if you can put it in front of our camera here, yeah. let's see uh, what that looks like. So boom, all of a sudden, as you can see, you've now got a green screen just by putting the ring in front of the camera. That's actually quite amazing. And now if you want it blue screen, you, what, you just make it a blue light? Here. So this controller box comes with the LED light ring and we can just flick the toggle switch over straight onto blue. So if somebody's wearing maybe a green badge, right. green stripes on the shirt, we just flick to the blue. So you don't have to change the color of the screen? Absolutely Stick not. Stick that up there again. And now, all of a sudden, you've got blue screen up there, which is, which is really quite amazing that uh, you can do that, you know, without having to worry about which color, like you say, you can change it back, uh, back and either way. You know, a um, couple of things that people have to worry about with green screen usually is spill. Now, yep. spill usually comes from light reflecting off the back screen. Correct. Here you've got a green light shining on the talent. How do you deal with that? So that basically the spill that you might get is when people stand too close to the green or the blue light ring. If you're anything maybe five or six feet away, then the natural ambient light will flood any of the green or blue light from the subject. So the spill will not become a problem six feet or more away. The second thing is, is each LED light ring that mounts onto the camera, you can change the intensity. Ah. So if you are getting a green or a blue cast onto the actual talent, we can just decrease the amount of green light coming out so that it falls off the talent, but it still is reflected by this highly reflective chroma screen. So the other thing that I noticed that's cool, usually with the green screens, you need to have a good deal of separation between the talent and the screen. So you not only want to have 10 or 15 feet between the camera and the talent, but then you want another 10 or 15 yeah. feet. Yeah. But this guy's sitting right back on, yeah. on that. Why, how is that different? Uh, that's different because the, the way the system works is the screen is so reflective. You need as much as that screen visible to the camera and the light ring to get a clean key first time round. So the closer to the camera and the further away from the, the fabric that we, we have here, the larger the shadow. So then you will get some form of like ghosting around the subject. You take the subject back to the, within one foot of the cloth and that will completely eliminate your problem. You know, the other thing that strikes me about having the subject so close to the screen is that you don't need as much screen. So, you know, if, if, if they're, you know, usually if they're 10 or 15 feet away, you need to have a lot more to accommodate the, uh, the, the uh, lens of the camera. But here, when they're much closer, so do you guys sell like the pop-up kind and the expandable, you know, so you could just, you could probably have a like, green screen system in your backpack. Absolutely, yeah, so th this is a really portable system. We have the smallest drape that we do is a, an eight foot by eight foot drape, but we also do a seven by seven pop-up and a four by four pop-up. So it is literally a, a green screen on the road because you need minimal lighting and as you can see that there are creases in the fabric here it doesn't matter they still key out when we, we pass it through a uh, at the minute we're using black magic's uh, atem switcher and the creases and the wrinkles are not causing any problems with this system so a four by four pop-up how small does that get down into uh, i think it's just under half a meter 
a small bag. I, understand, I don't understand those numbers you're using. <laughs> Maybe. Um, it's like a foot and a half, to yeah, two foot, short, yeah. I think a meter half. is about three feet, yeah, right, yeah, approximately. Sure. Yeah, about a foot and a half, maybe maybe a bit smaller. Um, and so you've got a foot and a half thing, so it's something you can put in your bag or put in your tote or whatever in your yeah. car, and um, you have a little light like this, which looks like it takes up no room, absolutely. and a couple of talent lights, yeah. and Bob's your uncle. Yeah. So it's a green and blue screen that's very portable, very easy to set up, and can give you some good quality results. As simple as that. And it sounds like you're from the north, is that right? Uh, the Midlands, so yeah. not. Stoke-on-Trent is where I'm from, and this, this is manufactured, and uh, the headquarters for Reflect Media is in Cheshire, in the UK. Fantastic. I was actually born in London myself, oh, really? but moved uh, to America when I was uh, just a lad. <laughs> just a lad, as they say, so I don't really have the accent anymore, but it's always fun to hear that again. Absolutely. Calvin Holcroft, thank you so much Actually, for your time. No problem at all. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have at this uh, particular interview, but we'll be back with a lot more coming up soon, so please stay with us here on Live Now. Uh, the the fruit there go to picture we have sharpness we can also enable backlight compensation if we are in exposure auto mode which we are not at the moment finally we have here we can turn on and off the power we can flip the image let's try that yeah like that and then we have finally our focus so I can actually defocus this image with the encoder now yeah, that's pretty cool and we can do that with the PDC extreme which is one of our really cool new controllers come to our booth and see it so of course uh, finally joystick control so exciting I can zoom in I can zoom out by turning the knob on the joystick I can uh, I think this is a homing button Ooh, home was not really what I wanted now you see all the details in my studio oh no okay and of course there we go Slowly. Now, pen tilt zoom, ladies and gentlemen, come to booth C1259 in Central Hall and see it yourself. Have a great NAB show 2019. <laughs>Welcome to this NAB 2019 special. Skahoy has a booth in Central Hall. You can come watch all our gear right there. This is a demonstration of one of the things we're exhibiting, the NXT 910 with the Skahoy RCP. The NXT 910 is a frame synchronizer from Ensemble Design, so you can see it in their suite at the Renaissance, and uh, you can also see it in, in our booth. Now, it's hooked up with a Marshall camera, which is really lovely, and in fact, you can shade that directly, but the point of the frame synchronizer is that you can combine it with an RCP if you want to adjust video sources, which are otherwise not shadable, like GoPro cameras and so forth, and the Skahoy RCP is divided into a section where in the top you have uh, parameters, uh, you can access, in this case, gain and offset for for the incoming video. And uh, in the lower section, you usually have a joystick, but in this case, we put in a really lovely um, a thumb roller or yeah, roller wheel. I think we call it a roller wheel, which is essentially an encoder that will uh, allow you to adjust parameters. And the cool thing is, we you can have multiple channels and easily change between them without getting out of sync, which would be the case with a physically stuck joystick that many people prefer but only lends itself really best to a single camera or channel now let's take a look at what these things can do uh, you can have all the details at our booth if you come down but for those of you not at NAB you might not be so lucky to be able to see that now um, it has a web interface the frame synchronizer so it looks like this, and if I go to the program section, then we have access to what might uh, be the most important parameter on the RCP, which is namely the iris. So there is no iris adjustment in this case because it's just a video signal that could come from a GoPro camera, goes into the frame synchronizer. But we can adjust the program, which is kind of the closest thing we, we, we have to that. And when I'm rolling the, the thumb roller, you can see the gain is going up and down in the display right there. And you also see this is reflected in the web interface. If I pull the fader or the, the slider in the web interface, this value is changing over here. You can also see it on the output picture. Yes, you can also change channels. We 
put that on the upper selector in this case so you can change to channel 2, 3 and 4 and if I go back here then I can go into menus where you can adjust gain, red, green and blue, offset, red, green and blue, you can adjust gain, pedestal, chroma and also over here we have access to gain settings for audio which can be 8 channels or 9 to channel 16 if you hold down this shift key for each single frame synchronizer inside this little great unit. I think it's the world's smallest frame synchronizer. You can actually uh, line three of them up in a single one unit size. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing. So, um, yes, that's what we have at, at display. So come to our booth and check this one out. It's, uh, of course, our RCP is generally geared to work with cameras uh, like the EVA One camera or Sony cameras or uh, even robotic cameras. Uh, Blackmagic cameras traditionally, but in this case it's working with frame synchronizer. It could also be an AJA frame synchronizer like the FS4, FS2, FSHGR. Up to you. We make universal broadcast controllers and we try to support as many devices as we possibly can with different hardware form factors so that you can always pick the right control type for whatever context you're in. <laughs> What if your switcher surface and your deck controller and your routing panel and your PTZ joystick 
What if you only had to bring one panel? Scarhoy controllers are powerful universal broadcast panels. With support for installing any device support you need, install support for your Panasonic PTZ, add support for a Sony camera as well, and integrate control of your A10 video switcher too. We are serious about integration. Welcome to this NAB2019 special about the Panasonic Evo 1 camera and the Skahoy RCP. So, if you want to see all the details, come to our booth in Central Hall and we'll show you. But in this video, I'll give you a quick overview. So, first of all, the Evo 1 camera is a great cinematic camera made for recording beautiful pictures. But if you want to use it on a live production, you need an RCP panel. Otherwise, you can't adjust its colors so it matches other cameras. And that's what we made happen. So, um, with us today, we have have the uh, RCP V2 from Skahoy, the EVO 1 camera right here. And basically an RCP is that panel that you install in your OB truck or in your studio, typically lined up with a number of other panels, so they will sit next to each other, one for each camera, and you can pull handles, or in this case, uh, in, in, on, on this particular version on the screen behind me, you see we have a roller wheel, which is a new feature you can come to our booth and check out, which is really awesome if you want to use every RCP for multiple cameras, that's possible as well. And and really, these RCPs are necessary to connect your, um, uh, to control the colors on the camera. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So the most important thing you can really do on an RCP will be to adjust the iris. So you'd see the handle right here on the RCP. When I pull this handle, I'm adjusting the iris and you can see it on the output picture from the camera. So that's one basic feature. Another one will be adjusting the master black. So you can see when I, I turn the ring on the joystick, I am adjusting the black level on the picture. Now, I want to take you a bit closer to it, so just allow me to recall a preset on my robotic camera right here. And you'll see, um, if we just go to the section we saw before, you can see in this, pic uh, in this display, you see the, um, the value of the aperture. You also see here the uh, pedestal, the master pedestal value, which is the one that I'm adjusting with the ring. Actually, this encoder knob will give you an alternative way of setting this value. Now, uh, we have a number of other buttons. Typically, you know, program, uh, sorry, uh, preview button. It flips a relay inside. Um, you'll see that button right here flips a relay it's also on top of the joystick we have auto iris if i press auto iris you'll see that it's automatically adjusting yes and i can uh, turn it off again we have uh, active panel on off now i want to go to the top 
a part of the RCP. So in this section, you really see all the parameters we can adjust. And this is so cool because this camera has a lot of parameters you can set uh, and that you want to set if you're a professional uh, camera uh, shader. Then you see here we have a pedestal for red, green and blue. We have the master pedestal over here. We have um, master knee enable. We can set knee point and knee slope. So if I use this encoder to uh, change this value, you'll see that I, t I now enable master knee and I have the ability to set the knee point and the slope and so forth. Um, I have a chroma parameter here. We have color coded these knobs so that they are grouped together. You can see these three knobs. They have the same color while these are colored red, green and blue and white for the uh, overall master pedestal right there. Now, if you want to change these settings, then you need a menu. And we decided to put the menu onto this RCP on the upper button. So there you see when I press this button, I'm now going to the uh, linear matrix. So now we have linear matrix settings. If I enable this, then you see uh, the dimensions red to green, red to blue, uh, green to red, green to blue, and so forth. And of course, we can adjust these parameters with the knobs, and that's really uh, uh, cool. If I go on, I have frame rates. I can set exposure index, uh, master, uh, sorry, master gain. Um, variable shutter shutter uh, speed, which I cannot change right now because I have turned this one off. But if I turn it on, then you see now I have ability to set the shutter speed, just to mention one thing. Or you can set it in uh, degrees instead because the camera supports these two uh, different aspects of it. Now we have ND filter as well, which is in this case um, automated in this camera. White balance settings, we have gamma settings. And finally, we have a lot of color correction parameters in this little uh, unit. Um, that, that, that's the more advanced stuff. Come to our booth and see all these things in action. If, or follow us on YouTube where you'll find videos that go in depth with this great camera. We are really happy to bring it out to you at NAB 2019 and uh, to Panasonic for working with us and making this happen. <laughs>
It's a super strong, heavy-duty bag that slips right on the cart handle, allowing you to load speaker stands, light stands, folding stools, and all those other things that used to fall off the cart. We love our new cart, and we love the Grip and Gap bag, and I think you will too. Hi there, and welcome to this NAB 2019 special about Marshall CV 350 cameras, POV cameras, and the Skahoy RCP V2. Now, the Skahoy RCP V2 is a classic Sony form factor RCP with a section for setting all the uh, color and exposure and white balance settings of your cameras. And in the bottom, there is also space for a joystick, or you can have an option with a, an encoder wheel, which is uh, very useful if you have multiple cameras you want to shade, like for instance, if you had three. Marshall cameras on your set. But today we have only one camera and this camera is a serial camera so it's connected to this serial to Ethernet converter. This is how we roll in terms of getting access to serial devices and that's really cool because it means you can make that transition point from serial to um, IP anywhere in your infrastructure, wherever it fits you the best. So the RCP is connected to a PoE switch, meaning that it has one cable that gives you power and signals. So the RCP is talking to this box that sends serial signals forth and back to the Marshall camera. And the beautiful thing is that the RCP will actually ask the camera, what are your current settings? So whenever you see the settings on the RCP is actually reflecting the current settings of the camera. We put great pride into integrating with cameras with the specific value ranges so we know what iris values, shutter speeds, gain settings are in these cameras and uh, bring it to you. So it's like a native experience, but still you have a unified ex uh, set of, of RCPs in your obi van because these ones could be hooked up with other cameras like Blackmagic, Ari, Sony, Panasonic, etc. In this case, the Marshall camera. So we are really enabling these cameras for multi-camera production. And if you want to take a look at the RCP, in this top section up here, we just to give you a quick idea, we can choose the exposure mode by using this encoder between auto, manual, shutter speed, iris, and those settings will become available. Um, as we do that, you can see, I, I think we should go to manual mode. That would be the most natural when we are working with uh, an RCP. But of course, you have exposure compensation in the automatic modes. You can turn that on and off, turn on and off, backlight compensation and so forth. Um, let's go back to the manual mode because shortly we are gonna uh, show the iris joystick. Just quickly before we can also access white balance. This is basically a menu selector. These buttons are menu selectors while uh, these buttons up here has settings for focus and so forth. Up here we now have white balance settings so I can put it from a a white balance uh, auto mode to indoor to outdoor to one push and all the way down to manual mode where when you see it's reading the the values I can create a really horrible looking picture if I please. Now um, that's not what I please. I want to go back and show you the uh, iris um, adjustments of course because that's the big thing about an RCP. We have this joystick as I'm pulling the joystick, you can see I'm adjusting iris on the camera, and that's exactly what is happening right now. You see how the picture follows? I use the joystick to adjust the iris of the Marshall camera. Voila, that's exactly what we are uh, looking for to have that type of control. The point of the RCP to do that. All the other things are typically presettings you do before the show to match the cameras color-wise, and then you use the iris joystick during the operation. So there you go. Skahoy RCP V2 for Marshall CV350. Come to our booth in Central Hall and see it live. Why are the Think Tank Video Transport Series back so damn good? Well, I'm sure you've heard it all before. So we'll forego all that technical mumbo jumbo. We can take my lamb out. Because we like to party. We don't just roll our backs around town. We travel internationally. Our Think Tank gear is a rite of passage and a true compadre in our long trips. When your lifeblood is creating epic imagery worldwide, your sweet cameras and equipment need to get there in one piece. We get all kinds of emotional over our Think Tank rollers, making us look more manly and tough on the outside. But we're not the only ones. They work for our lady friends, too. 
Oops. Just look at that sexy lady. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Yours, Jamie! <laughs> We've taken them everywhere and in every condition. And more often than not, well, these bags last longer than the equipment it protects. And we've checked a few. Just don't tell anybody. Hi, my name's Kay. I work in production like many of you all out there, whether it's in film and television. I'm always looking for a product that makes my life a lot easier. And when it comes to carrying my light stands, when it comes to carrying my tripod or my boom pole on my rock and roll cart, I love this new product, Grip and Gaff, made out of a solid material, got a very solid base to it, the convenience of strapping things in tight without having any of your poles or light stands sway back and forth. Take a look at it, the Grip and Gaff, made in the US. Go visit their website today. Sound silencers enable you to eliminate that ripping sound so you don't attract attention when opening your bag, say on the green at the PGA Tour. Filmmakers, photographers, musicians, mobile DJs, and audio techs may be artists, but we are first schleppers of equipment. Whatever cart you're using to roll your gear into a location, there's always a problem with tripods, C-stands, PA speaker stands, keyboards, and drum kit stands, because they don't stack well, sometimes fall off. Their length also causes problems by making it hard to get into elevators and around corners. Introducing the Grip and Gaff Bag version 2.0. Bigger, tougher, and better than the original, but with the same features you've come to love. Version 2.0 is over 13 inches in diameter versus 12 inches on version 1 and features a lighter, tougher bottom. You just can't beat it. Well, actually you can. Just slide it over your card handle and fill it with those items that would normally make it hard to get through doors or into elevators. The hard plastic bottom and awesomely sturdy ballistic nylon will last through years of hard work. The strap at the top secures your gear in an upright position for easy transit into and out of buildings, and storage is a breeze. If you're using rock and roller, cart master, or magliner carts, there are cutouts to let you attach your shelves. Grip and Gaff is perfect for film and video makers, mobile DJs, audio professionals, musicians, and anyone else who uses a cart to move their equipment. So tame your gear and make your life easier with the Grip and Gaff Bag. Today is a special day. Well, every day is a special day. Let's get, let's get right to it. I was just thinking, we have over 250 videos on our YouTube channel, on our main channel. Every one of those has been filmed with the Glide Cam. It's the one product we've used. Cameras have been changing, batteries are changing, lenses have always changed, but we've always used the Glide Cam. So I haven't done a ton of videos on Glide Cam, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with sharing you guys tips, tricks I've learned over the last 10 years using the product, showing video examples, and also kind of showing an inside look as far as why I started using Glycam to begin with.
So the reason I started using a glide cam to begin with, and this was 10 plus years ago, roughly, give or take, I wanted to be different than all the other filmmakers out there um, that were at least on my level, high school level. I, the best way to do that, in my opinion, or one of the best ways is to do wedding videos, because don't we all do wedding videos sometime in our career? At least a lot of us do. And I noticed everybody had just static shots, and I was like, those look so boring. No offense to anyone that just does static shots. And I found out um, there was a product called Glidecam. There's another product called Steadicam. So that was much further above my pay scale. So I looked at the next big thing, and that was a Glidecam. This was more for consumers, even prosumers, and especially for my budget doing wedding stuff. This was perfect. So I bought a Glidecam 2000. I started doing wedding videos and having these really cinematic moving shots. And I'll actually have some of those shots pop up right now from my early days of filming with a Glidecam. And you can see, um, it's not revolutionary. I didn't have it perfected by any means. I'm always still learning about it all. But these shots, they stood out a lot more for wedding videos, especially at the time when no one had these moving tracking shots. But with the Glidecam, it made it or empowered me as a filmmaker to make my movies look like I had a budget when I was doing everything on a very, very, very small budget. Now Glycam, they've always kind of updated their Glycams or had different Glycams. They had a Glycam 2000, Glycam 4000 for different sizes of cameras. And then Glycam came to me and they were like, hey Devin, you use a product constantly. We know that you love the product. And we'll like ask if I love the product. I'm like, absolutely. And they're like, let's team up, work together. What would you suggest would be the perfect Glycam for the kind of videos that you do? What would be the best tool to tell a story the way you want it to tell? And that's kind of where the Devin Graham Signature Series Glide Cam came, which is right here. And these are the ones that we use now. And all the stuff that's out there now where people are getting smooth shots that didn't really exist a ton, especially on YouTube. So it made our channel and the kind of content we were creating stand out a lot more. It was super exciting for me, um, and it created a ton of opportunities. When I first started that YouTube channel the first year, I got a contact, or I got contacted by a company, and they wanted me to shoot a commercial in Iceland. And they said, the reason we want to hire you is because we've never seen smooth shots on rough terrain like you are getting. So I, at the time, I didn't have a behind the scenes channel, so they didn't know what I looked like. So they thought I was like this old filmmaker. They thought I was like a 50 year old. So they flew me to Iceland first class. They gave me like this and, um, incredible experience. But when I got on the airplane, off the airplane, they're like, we thought you were so much older. It was just because of the work, because of the tools I had to tell the story, um, it spoke for itself and I had opportunity after opportunity from filming with a product. So if people ask like, what is the one tool that you've had that's changed your career and given you opportunities? It wasn't the camera, it all goes back to the glide cam. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey Devin, I don't have a budget to buy a glide cam, what would you suggest to get smooth shots if I have a zero dollar budget? Three things that I would suggest is a wheelchair. If you have a wheelchair, you sit down in the wheelchair, and this is what we did in film schools. You'd actually sit down in the wheelchair, hold the camera, then have someone push you, and then you'll get really smooth shots that way. It's not gonna be the same thing as a glide cam, but if you're running on a smaller budget, the second option that I wanna bring up to you guys is you get a two by four board, and you have one person hold it on each side and then you hook the camera, you mount the camera to the 2x4 and then both of you walk with the 2x4 and then it makes the camera significantly smoother compared to if you're running with the camera. If you have two people holding, running with the board, it's going to make it a lot smoother. You'll see things like the one wheel. So here I could hold the camera just like a rollerblades and I can get really smooth shots. Something like this though, you're spending about $1,800. So this is another option to get smooth shots as far as anything on wheels, filming out of a car, filming um, on a bike, even though that's not very easy, or rollerblades is probably gonna be your best option for something a little cheaper if you're running on a cheaper budget. So 
there you have it. That was an overview on why I use the Glide Cam. Now, if you want more videos like this, make sure to leave in the comments down below and like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, get on that. And later this week, we'll be also showing one more video, examples of using the Glide Cam and tricks and tips. It's gonna be answering a lot of your guys' questions. We've already filmed the video, so it is coming out later this week. So stay tuned, turn on those post notifications so you can be aware of when that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching, over and out. Hi, I'm Zach Charney Cohen. I'm a systems engineer here at Open Drives, and I'm also a workflow specialist. Here at Open Drives, we've built a demo center that is the fastest post production suite in Hollywood. We wanted to provide a space in which people could come in and test with their own media or uh, with media that we create for them to see what it's like to work in the applications that they're already used to working with to really see what they can achieve. For those who aren't in Southern California, we have the ability to broadcast a live demo to anywhere in the world, uh, which we can do and show all of the various softwares working in real time. We have Adobe Premiere, we have Resolve, we have the Nuke and Nuke Studio running on top of the line HP, Z6, and Z8 workstations, all connected 100 gig directly to the workstation through an Arista 100 gig switch to our storage. One of the projects that we like to show is a fully intact edit of an episode of Mindhunter from the first season. Uh, this project has 77,000 assets. So to open that project on another storage solution might take upwards of 10 minutes, where with us it takes more along the lines of 10 seconds. The most powerful thing that we're demonstrating here really is showing multiple discrete workflows, nonlinear editing, visual effects, color correction, all working together simultaneously off of the same assets, whether they are compressed or uncompressed, off of a single Open Drive Summit. So, all of this might sound too good to be true, in which case, I would say, please come by and check it out. guys, welcome to this NAB 2019 special. We are focusing on PTC camera control in this video. And we are really so excited this year to bring out the new design series for our uh, larger controllers at Skahoy. We have changed over to blue and black theme and we think it's so awesome. We have got so much positive feedback on this design change. And um, yeah, it's just really great. It's like coming home, finally arriving where we've been heading for, for quite some time. And um, we also have the Rust Pivot Cam, and this is going to be a uh, world premiere for Skahoy integrating with Rust cameras. And um, I'll just give you a quick look into this. You can come to our booth if you want to see more details. But in this video, let me just quickly show you that we can actually adjust uh, stuff in this camera and move it, of course. So PDC control. I have uh, decided on this configuration to do something slightly different from what I usually do, which is to uh, make the uh, select section a camera selector. So I now have no camera selected and I have only one camera so this is now selected um, by pressing button number one. I have also put preset buttons down here. So I have decided to put the label presets up for you so when I press the button called close you see that it's recalling a preset in the camera that goes close because this is how I stored it and far is of course far. So this shows you one of the really takeaways for Skawi controllers. You have label presets for the preset buttons and um, yeah try to beat that. I mean that's that's really awesome and again remember that it's so important in 
visual media production to have your eyes on the screen, which is why you want to have tactile feedback. And we are all about that with Skyway controllers. We have um, also a section for uh, settings, so we can uh, just quickly go through the, this. We can set the exposure mode, and obviously we can adjust iris shutter speed gain and stuff like that. We can adjust the, the, the white balance of the uh, camera. We can go to auto mode, and we have access to red and, and blue gain in the camera over here. And then we go to the color, where we have saturation. We can actually remove all color from uh, the, the fruit there. Go to picture, we have sharpness. We can also enable backlight compensation if we are in exposure auto mode, which we are not at the moment. Finally, we have here, we can turn on and off the power. We can flip the image. Let's try that. Yeah, like that. And then we have finally our focus. So I can actually defocus this image with the encoder now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And we can do that with the PDC Extreme, which is one of our really cool new controllers. Come to our booth and see it. So of course, uh, finally joystick control, so exciting. I can zoom in, I can zoom out by turning the knob on the joystick. I can, uh, I think this is a homing button. Ooh, home was not really what I wanted. Now you see all the details in my studio. Oh no. Okay. And of course, there we go slowly. Now, pen tilt zoom, ladies and gentlemen, come to booth C1259 in Central Hall and see it yourself. Have a great NAB show 2019. <laughs>to this NAB 2019 special. Skahoy has a booth in Central Hall. You can come watch all our gear right there. This is a demonstration of one of the things we're exhibiting, the NXT 910 with the Skahoy RCP. The NXT 910 is a frame synchronizer from Ensemble Designs. So you can see it in their suite at the Renaissance and uh, you can also see it in, in our booth. Now it's hooked up with a Marshall camera which is really lovely and in fact you can shade that directly but the point of the frame synchronizer is that you can combine it with an RCP if you want to adjust video sources which are otherwise not shadable like GoPro cameras and so forth and the Skahoy RCP is divided into a section where in the top you have uh, parameters uh, you can access, in this case, gain and offset for for the incoming video. And uh, in the lower section, you usually have a joystick, but in this case, we put in a really lovely um, a thumb roller or yeah, roller wheel. I think we call it a roller wheel, which is essentially an encoder that will uh, allow you to adjust parameters. And the cool thing is, we you can have multiple channels and easily change between them without getting out of sync, which would be the case with a physically stuck joystick that many. people people prefer but only lends itself really best to a single camera or channel. Now let's take a look at what these things can do. Uh, you can have all the details at our booth if you come down but for those of you not at NAB you might not be so lucky to be able to see that. Now um, it has a web interface, the frame synchronizer. So. It looks like this, and if I go to the program section, then we have access to what might uh, be the most important parameter on the RCP, which is namely the iris. So there is no iris adjustment in this case because it's just a video signal that could come from a GoPro camera, goes into the frame synchronizer. But we can adjust the program, which is kind of the closest thing we, we, we have to that. And when I'm rolling the, the thumb roller, you can see the gain is going up and down in the display right there. And you also see this is reflected in the web interface. If I pull the fader or the, the slider in the web interface, this value is changing over here. You can also see it on the output picture. Yes, you can also change channels. We put that on the upper selector in this case, so you can change to channel 2, 3, and 4. And if I go back here, then I can go into menus where you can adjust gain, red, green, and blue, offset, red, green, and blue. You can adjust gain, pedestal, chroma, and also over here we have access to gain settings for audio, which can be 8 channels or 9 to channel 16 if you hold down this shift key for each single frame synchronizer inside this little great unit. I think it's the world's smallest frame synchronizer. You can actually uh, line three of them up in a single one unit size. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing. So, um, yes, that's what we have at, at display. So come to our booth and check this one out. It's, uh, of course, our RCP is generally geared to work with cameras. Uh, like the EVA 1 camera or Sony cameras or uh, even robotic cameras. Uh, Blackmagic cameras traditionally, but in this case, it's working with frame synchronizer. It could also be an AJA frame synchronizer like the FS4, FS2, FSHGR. Up to you. 
we make universal broadcast controllers and we try to support as many devices as we possibly can with different hardware form factors so that you can always pick the right control type for whatever context you're in. What if your switcher surface and your deck controller and your routing panel and your PTZ joystick? What if you only had to bring one panel? Scarhoy controllers are powerful universal broadcast panels with support for installing any device support you need. Install support for your Panasonic PTZ. Add support for a Sony camera as well. And integrate control of your A10 video switcher too. We are serious about integration.
Welcome to this NAB 2019 special about the Panasonic Evo 1 camera and the Skyhoy RCP. So, if you want to see all the details... Well, it has been an incredible first day live here at NAB 2019. It's not been without its problems. We've had some streaming hiccups. Uh, there were several interviews. Unfortunately, it looked like we were in a, a spot of the uh, building here with a heck of a lot of RF interference and not the best cell coverage. So we may have dropped the uh, signal a few times there. But fear not, because we are recording all of these locally. And any ones you didn't get to see today, we're going to be posting up on YouTube in just the next uh, couple of days. Of course, you can see us on YouTube.com at uh, youtube.com slash live now broadcasting and on Facebook facebook.com slash live now broadcasting we will be back here tomorrow from 1 to 4 p.m. once again um, please don't forget to sign up for our live giveaways well the giveaways aren't live but uh, uh, we're gonna have giveaways from some of our wonderful sponsors uh, so if you sign that you can find the link to sign up there on YouTube you can find the link on our Facebook page or on Twitter as well we're live now crew on Twitter uh, and uh, give us a subscribe give us a like get signed up to win some of those wonderful prizes I also want to thank our sponsors for today uh, Teradec.com uh, Teradec's a wonderful company providing our live streaming and doing doing their best to get our signal out there open drives another wonderful company uh, for, that uh, uh, makes uh, NAS network attack storage wonderful stuff for uh, uh, high quality video editing, high uh, end video editors like Pixar and such. Glidecam, wonderful stabilizers. Scarhoy is a company that makes great control surfaces. Grip and Gaff makes excellent bags for the very popular rock and roller cart. And of course, Think Tank Photo makes some of the best bags and backpacks and roller carriers for video and photo products. I'm Ben Friedman, and uh, this is Live Now Broadcasting. Thank you once again. We will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And always remember that you can find us right here on Live Now. booth in Central Hall and we'll show you but in this video I'll give you a quick overview. So first of all the EVA 1 camera is a great cinematic camera made for recording beautiful pictures but if you want to use it on a live production you need an RCP panel otherwise you can't adjust its colors so it matches other cameras and that's what we made happen. So um, with us today we have the uh, RCP V2 from Skyhoy the EVA 1 camera right here and basically an RCP is that panel that you install in your OB truck or in your studio typically lined up with a number of other panels so they will sit next to each other one for each camera and you can pull handles or in this case uh, in, in on, on this particular version on the screen behind me you see we have a roller wheel which is a new feature you can come to our booth and check out which is really awesome if you want to use every RCP for multiple cameras that's possible as well and really these RCPs are necessary to connect your um, uh, to control the colors on the camera and that's what I'm gonna show you right now so the most important thing you can really do on an RCP will be to adjust the iris. So you'd see the handle right here on the RCP. When I pull this handle, I'm adjusting the iris and you can see it on the output picture from the camera. So that's one basic feature. Another one will be adjusting the master black. So you can see when I, I turn the ring on the joystick, I am adjusting the black level on the picture. Now, I want to take you a bit closer to it. So just allow me to recall a preset on my robotic camera right here and you'll see um, if we just go to the section we saw before you can see in this pic uh, in this display you see the um, the value of the aperture you also see here the uh, pedestal the master pedestal value which is the one that I'm adjusting with the ring actually this encoder knob will give you an alternative way of setting this value now uh, we have a number of other buttons typically you know program uh, sorry uh, preview button it flips a relay inside um, you'll see that button right here flips a relay it's also on top of the joystick we have auto iris if I press auto iris you'll see that it's automatically adjusting yes and I can uh, turn it off again we have uh, active panel on off now I want to go to the top a part of the RCP. So in this section you really see all the parameters we can adjust and this is so cool because this camera has a lot of parameters you can set uh, and that you want to set if you're a professional uh, camera uh, shader then you see here we have a pedestal for red, green and blue. We have the master pedestal over here. We have um, master knee enabled. We can set knee point and knee slope. So if I use this encoder to uh, change this value you'll see that I, t I now enable master knee and I have 
the ability to set the knee point and the slope and so forth. Um, I have a chroma parameter here. We have color coded these knobs so that they are grouped together. You can see these three knobs, they have the same color while these are colored red, green and blue and white for the uh, overall master pedestal right there. Now if you want to change these settings then you need a menu and we decided to put the menu onto this RCP on the upper button. So there you see when I press this button, I'm now going to the uh, linear matrix. So now we have linear matrix settings. If I enable this, then you see uh, the dimensions red to green, red to blue, uh, green to red, green to blue, and so forth. And of course, we can adjust these parameters with the knobs, and that's really uh, uh, cool. If I go on, I have frame rates. I can set exposure index, uh, master, uh, sorry, master gain. Um, variable shutter, shutter uh, speed, which I cannot change right now because I have turned this one off. But if I turn it on, then you see now I have ability to set the shutter speed, just to mention one thing. Or you can set it in uh, degrees instead because the camera supports these two uh, different aspects of it. Now we have ND filter as well, which is in this case um, automated in this camera. White balance settings, we have gamma settings, and finally we have a lot of color correction parameters in this little uh, unit. Um, that, that, that's the more advanced stuff. Come to our booth and see all these things in action if, or follow us on YouTube where you'll find videos that go in depth with this great camera. We are really happy to bring it out to you at NAB 2019 and uh, to Panasonic for working with us and making this happen. Mm -hmm.